there we are. Like nothing ever uh, went wrong. <laughs> Which technically nothing did go wrong, but there's always so many things that I'm concerned about. I'm babbling. This is Legends of the Drowned Isles, a homebrew D&D 5th Ed campaign. Campaign number two, The Great Confusion. I am the host and GM of this game. I'm Mark Dincaffinated One, but I'm very happy to be joined by my players, starting on my left with Silas. Hey, my name is Pat. I'm playing Silas Marsh, Ghostly Warlock. Hi, I'm playing. Uh, my name is Murray, and I'm playing Annie, uh, who is very, very confused, uh, doesn't magic, uh, very rogue, doesn't magic. <laughs> and I'm Nax, and I'm playing Medrick, half orc cleric, who uh, I don't think he doesn't think he had too much to drink, but he just woke up in the palace washroom and. No idea what's going on. <laughs> so aside from a blackout, a, a wispiness, and a, a t-shirt slogan, uh, very rogue doesn't magic. I, I kind of want that one now. Um, indeed, strange things are happening. And we're going to switch right over to the map screen to show everybody kind of a little bit of a view of what's going on. As the, uh, the party continues, I guess. Uh, at the uh, Harquin Mansion. This is also known as the Baron and Baroness's uh, uh, house or their mansion, where they've been hosting a number of the top people in town. Uh, a get to know you, a celebration of the Baroness overcoming her illness, uh, a, a declaration that good times are on the horizon, the culmination of a week long celebration in which an entire menagerie of, of uh, Games and strange beasts and a lot of weird folks, entertaining folks, uh, came into town. But the party has gone through a couple of different phases, you might say. The initial one, of course, being that awkward phase, or maybe that formal phase, when everybody shows up in their costumes and or masks and kind of gets a chance to mingle with everyone around. Well, just about everybody. Uh, of course, uh, Annie on on the arm of one Captain Verandell. Uh, Medric as the Phoenix Champion on the arm of Melora, uh, both uh, mingling with the party. But uh, Silas deciding that to take the side window, <laughs> going to look around and poke around inside the residence upstairs. Uh, but uh, the... Uh, the uh, party kind of continued with a few oddities, uh, a sense from Annie that there were invisible something moving around, uh, and the sense that there was some tension in the room, and also different meetings going on, sort of subgroups being formed. Uh, the Baron invited a number of people, including the Phoenix Champion, to meet in the uh, in the uh, library outside of his own office. And apparently, maybe a second meeting going on as other people went missing from the main group. But as the as this team reconvenes on the main floor and discovers strange, magical, ugly bags of goo or possibly disease planted several places around the mansion start to suspect that something strange has gone on. Having located a number of those, they believe they've found some evidence, although it's difficult to see. It destroys itself and seems to vanish. And then, of course, the further infiltration of a inner chamber of the Baroness, which leads to a room that seems to have a living plant for a carpet, has made things rather curious and strange. Kind of painful. A little painful, yeah. But then the lights went out. Sort of. A grand shift was felt by everyone as the entirety of the area seems to either have moved or maybe everyone has moved. It's really hard to tell at this point. And you find yourselves in a version of the mansion, but instead of the pristine wooden floors and uh, wonderfully uh, velvety uh, 
uh, wallpapered walls with uh, a beautiful, uh, pristine uh, artifacts and ornaments on the walls and paintings, you instead find yourself where stone floors are slowly being overgrown by mosses and plants are appearing in the middle of the hallway, where the walls themselves are nothing more than chunky stone that seem to be put together, like they're transliterated rather than actually transferred. Furthermore, you found yourselves in different areas too, uh, where a na uh, where uh, uh, sorry where Medric finds themselves in a washroom, apparently, and he found themselves in a hallway with a large bush at the end of the hallway in the intersection of the hallway and uh, the one that she's in in the other hallway. And perhaps strangest of all, Silas found himself not just there in a stranger place, the, uh, the uh, I forgot the name of it, the solarium, but also somewhat shifted in the world, his body seemingly insubstantial, or at least not entirely there. And of course, Silas was also to witness an, another strangeness, two people that he recognizes, his father-in-law, Wish Wyndham, and his friend Dudek. But they don't seem to be quite themselves. Dudek's head, in fact, is a silvery shaped, uh, oblong, fish like thing. He described it earlier as a dolphin. And Wish seems to be almost entirely covered from a head, at least as far as you can see, in metal. Wish is laughing uproariously. But Dudek seems to be feral in nature and has taken a swipe at the other. So, who would like to begin the next step of this party? Who is it that's seeing Wish and Dudek? That's Silas, currently in the... Um, actually, I can put the eye there. <coughs> Don't know if it can see even better. I guess it's a little bit. Uh, currently in the solarium with the pipe wrench. It's kind of a weird joke, sorry. Um, I might need to copy that eye a few places so that I can see them multiple places. Yeah, so they just ignored me. They don't seem to notice me. Doesn't seem to, no. Dudek was just flat out enraged. Hmm. I think this is a little easier. I'm going to copy my POV eye in a few places that should allow it to see a little bit better. Not much, because they, they don't have much revision. It is also very dim with a, a creepy green glow that seems to come from different places. Uh, Medric, you yourself are kind of lighting up that bathroom, but you do notice the sort of green line underneath the door out front. Uh, and Annie, you see a bit of green around the corner. Hopefully you see it. I'm still playing around with the lighting settings. So, yeah. I don't see it on the map, but I'm assuming that's because I haven't opened the door yet. But everything's gray on my screen. Pick yes, up and your it, character it earlier, and put though. it down. Yeah, if you pick up your character and put it down, yeah. it should improve that a bit. Okay, okay, yeah, it's come back. Yeah, it's one of the glitches that they have. Well... Is okay. Yeah, is the door here closed? Uh, it is. Okay. Oh, actually, one thing. Uh, you, I think you had said that all the furniture in the area was ruined. Yeah, it it looks as though it's it's ancient or overcome. You can see the a sort of edge of mold on some of it as well. Okay. Uh, so Silas is going to try to interact with the door. Okay. You feel Can pressure as your hand pushes on the door, but it does seem to push through slightly. You feel that you don't want to let it rest there too long as the substantiality of the door seems to be um, still felt, and you feel like if you rested for a moment on it, it would cause um, pain. But you okay. were able to sort of shake the door a little bit with with an effort. So my hand, my hand was pushing the material of the door out of the way. 
or was it phasing? It's kind, of, or? it's kind of like putting your hand through sand. It is pushing the sand, but the sand is reforming around your hand at the same time. Okay. And it almost felt as though if you let, if you rested your hand there for any more than a second or two, it would claim you. It's kind of terrifying. Hmm. Well, I take it I can't use, use the door handle or anything. You can certainly try. Okay, I do then. Okay. Roll a, uh, a athletics check at disadvantage. Yeah, unfortunately, you're not really able to grab onto the handle too much. Your hand keeps slipping through it. The handle moves a little bit, but then with the, without the force of, of effort or force of will, it, it passes right through. Well, I'm going to go over and try to physically shove Wish and Dudek apart. Maybe I can interact with them. Okay. Good luck. <laughs> Who are, are you going to try to just step between them, or are you going to try to push one or the other? I'm going to try and step between them, put a hand on each of their chests, and push back. Okay. Um, make a charisma check. Um. Persuasion would be appropriate if you have it trained. Yeah, I think that's. I don't think I can. Oh, I could hit charisma that way. Okay. Uh, yeah, I guess persuasion would also fit. But twenty four is plenty. Um, yeah, you feel your hands kind of push into them again. That sort of insubstantiality, unable to really do much to push them out of the way. Um, but for a brief instant, you see Wish stop in this cacophonous laughing, and kind of look strangely off in your direction, although still not really seeing you, it seems, uh, and then take, take a step back uh, kind of cautiously and then begin once again to, to laugh um, with, uh, without, any, uh, without any mirth. It's, sort of, it's this weird sort of almost giggle laugh that can't be stopped from this perspective. Uh, similarly, uh, Dudek takes a step back, but almost like a feral animal uh, you know, bends down a little bit and moves back Back and kind of puts his front hands on the on the uh, on the ground, and you can see it as he stepped back. The claws have dug into the floor, into the stone a little bit, and the, the stone crumbles slightly. I should say that through the window, all you see is a uh, a, a sort of uh, darkness. There's not per no no particular substantial element outside that you can see. Okay. Um. Hmm. Well, that was interesting. Um, Silas is going to go over to Wish and put his hands on either side of where the mask was when Wish was wearing it earlier. And he's going to, he's going to say, this is not you this is the mask and try to take the mask off. He's trying to exert his will on it. Okay. You find no seam between the mask and his flesh. Yeah. He's just going to try and grab close to that area. Uh, like happened with the door. He's trying to change it okay. rather than just remove an actual mask. He's hoping to try to restore some uh, sanity to wish. Okay. Um, roll me a wisdom saving throw, please. Twenty-three. If it's magic, twenty-four. <laughs> nice. Um, you feel the backlash uh, waving over you and are able to step back a little bit. Um, you do take well. Well, the one anyway. You take one point of psychic damage. 
as you feel this overwhelming presence sort of snap back as if it's resisting your your efforts um, you don't feel like you've reached anything you kind of feel like you you encountered whatever is flowing throughout this entire area and for that brief instant there's a sort of sense of continuity that it wasn't wish you were touching it wasn't the mask it was everything that you were touching and trying to shove it out of the way felt like trying to move a mountain where you thought you were pushing a boulder. Okay. Um, let's let's move over to uh, Medric. All right. Sorry, I was on mute. Yeah, I keep myself on mute because the cat is on my lap and she's like, she's got really soft fur. So sometimes she slides off and when she realizes she slides off, it's like, oh, drip. And then I just swear randomly. So, <laughs> hence the mute button. So if we do you swear randomly, it's just a cat. That's, yes. That's fair. Stabbing me in the leg again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm in the washroom, and how different is it from the washroom I just left? Or I wasn't even in the washroom. You weren't even left. in the washroom, no. Yeah. Um, this one seems uh, the only other washroom. You were in the other one where you actually had seen the remains of the bag before it disappeared. This one seems yeah. uh, unaffected. There's no similar uh, effect there. It just looks like it's overgrown. The throne itself looks like it has cracked with time and age. Uh, the floor seems like it is sort of sunken in a little bit. The walls seem like they're kind of crumbly, but still firm. Whereas the walls were actually wood, uh, as was the uh, the floor. Okay. There's no particular light in here either, except for you. What the fuck? Do I have a headache or anything, or no? Don't see somebody spike my drink. <laughs> it, there's a there's that sort of wooziness that's happened to you a couple of times. Um, you remember it when you transfer when you fell down the hole in that uh, in the uh, below ground. Uh, below the city in the sewers, there right, was a right. hole where you ended up falling through and ended up in that other area where you first found, um, was it Thylestra? No, Thylestra was in the other campaign. Jeez. Uh, that was, uh, sorry, Regalesta? Regalesta, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Coincidence of name or not? Who knows? Anyway. <laughs> uh... So All you right, feel well, that sort of fades very quickly, but that sort of weird uh, sort of spatial uncertainty. After waiting a few moments to make sure like nothing's going to jump out at me because I'm feeling a little naked without my armor. If, you, if you're you know, standing behind the door and kind of waiting, you actually will mm -hmm. hear the faint sounds of growling and okay. laughing in kind of equal measure. Are they coming from far away or like right outside the door? Um... You hear some laughter closest to you, actually. Okay. Like, how close, roughly? I mean, make a perception check. If you have any auditory boost, that works. Perception? I think this character is actually pretty perceptive. I think, like, okay. You're the most perceptive of us. 14. <laughs> None of you guys are particularly perceptive, but a 14 is a pretty good roll. Um, feels like about... 10 or 15 feet just beyond the door and you do hear okay. a little bit of growling that feels like it's uh, sounds like it's kind of coming from around the corner all right i'll uh gently push open the door okay it moves open easily although it it creaks a little bit on the sort of rusted hinges that are there um, not far in front of you you see um actually i don't know if you can see that from there but let me just take the uh there shouldn't be a door in front of you, so you should be able to see straight forward. Um, you see... Uh, oh, I did forget to open one. <laughs> Pardon me, as I open up my Masks and Faces uh, document, which I'm going to <laughs> open up, so I remember who the hell is who. Uh, there's a lot of people here, so... Uh, the Great Confusion. Party people. A lot of people cosplaying a lot of things. It's true. It's true. It's like people pretending to be other people. Um, in front of you. Uh, oh, okay. Yep. Um, you see uh, a a man. At least you you recognize the rough shape of a humanoid man. You even recognize some elements of the coat that they were wearing. 
but now around their head there seems to be a protruding beak large brilliant feathers uh, and out of uh, different spots along their back you see this large tail of feathers there as you somewhat recognize the the uh, person who is wearing the peacock mask but now seems quite transformed uh, tri transformed into some sort of humanoid peacock right in front of you and they are laughing uproariously uh, they seem to be laughing sort of out the, the door and you hear a different kind of laugh. This one sounds very strange. It sounds, and in fact, uh, as you've kind of come a little closer, uh, Annie, you're hearing somewhat the same. Uh, it sounds almost like it's a gulping, like <laughs> laugh that's around the corner. Um, as you peer out, you also notice a sort of green glow coming from um, the uh, center of the room. I just okay. realized that all of my colored lights have gone. <laughs> um, let's see if this this brings it back. Uh, there we go. Well, it's uh, hard to get power in such an area. <laughs> uh, apparently so. Uh, but you do power sort outage. of have a, a, uh, a green glow that seems to be emitting somewhere from the center part of the room. And let's see if I can move all of my all of my uh, lanterns now and see if that makes a difference. So I see this peacock guy has been transformed into like an actual like human peacock hybrid. Kind of looks that way, yeah. I'll look down at myself like, have I been transformed into anything? You look the same. Okay. Does the peacock notice me? Doesn't seem to be. Kind of yeah, laughing, kind of like... slash clucking to himself or to whoever's on the other side of the door. Uh, and seems to be almost doing so involuntarily. It's a belly laugh that never ends. But strange coming out of this, this, uh, this, this beak. Um... I'm trying to remember if you actually met them before. Some of you did, some of you didn't. I don't know. The peacock was the met by um, Medric in the room with the Baron. That's fair. So you actually do are able to pick out from the clues you've seen before and the different clothing and the mask. Uh, you remember this to be Caden Cook. Uh, who was a half elf uh, who was kind of working the room, uh, but seemed to be representing the innkeepers. Uh, let's see. How do you spell his first name? C A Y. C A D E N. It's a, a simple spelling. Okay. Um, and from there, that's all you really notice. I'll just cautiously approach. Caden? As you step into the middle of the room, you notice this enormous plant has erupted out of the center part of the room. Long tendrils of vine seem to move around it, but move almost in an intelligent way. It kind of sways passively for the moment to a breeze you cannot see. Um, it seems uh, large, almost tentacular in its, in its vines, um, but very deeply rooted into the floor. Um, the peacock does not respond to your to your voice. Okay. As you step closer, you can see that they are laughing to someone on the other side of a door or of the open space. Um, you also start to notice that there are plants just sort of popping up through the ground in different places. Thick, uh, leafy. They have a, a, a an edge almost of of thick mucus around them as well. And while they seem to be both hardy and strong, they also seem to be sort of blackened and bruised and uh, almost sickly. Through the, through the uh, space, you also notice uh, someone whose blue skin is the first indication of someone you recognize as you see this enormous salmon-shaped head on top of a tall, lithe body, also laughing, which seems to be the source of the gulping laugh, um, who you remember to be... Uh, Ocean. Ocean, exactly. So you've taken one cautious step into the room. Nothing seems to have been noticed. Annie. Are there still mirrors in this hallway? 
Um, there seem to be mirrors, but they don't seem to be reflecting anything in the hallway. It's okay. almost as though they're all at different angles. And no angle seems to produce the hallway as you see it. Some of them are also fogged over. Okay. And right in front of you is a very thick bush uh, that seems to have kind of sprung up. It's not straight as it would normally be, but seems to be twisted and turned almost a, 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 a craggy or, or a, 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 a ball of living plant matter. I would like to, there's a bunch of plants, it, sh it looks like, are there, are there any sticks or anything on the ground? Uh, you can look around and make an investigation check to see what you can find. I reach for dice and I realize that I am not doing dice today. <laughs> uh, investigation. Ooh. Um, so as you're kind of digging around the, the base of the plants, um, you're finding nothing that looks like a, a branch, uh, only living wood. You think you pick up one that, that seems like it's disconnected, but instead you find uh, it covered in uh, a thick uh, mucus, which kind of burns your hands. You take two points of uh, poison damage as it kind of seeps in through your fingers. And it leaves a little sort of almost a, it's almost like acid, but not quite. Um, it does leave your fingers feeling a little numb. Okay. Um, if I poke the large plant, does it react in any way? Just... Uh, it does not seem to react. I will have you make a dexterity saving throw, though. Basically at the mercy of this, of getting out of this hallway. Okay. Um, I don't know if you have evasion at this point. Uh, I think I do. Give me a moment. Okay. Uh, I think you do. Um, it might be at 10. I'm not sure. Evasion, yep. Okay. Uh, then as you kind of poke in towards it and you kind of push at the, the sort of central spine rather than the fronds, you don't see it react so much as the fronds themselves kind of close in a little bit and you manage to extract your hand quickly enough so that it does not, uh, once again, coat your hand in that, that goo. Okay. Did I, would I have heard Medric um, call out to the peacock? Yeah, I think you would have heard Medric call out, yeah. Medric! Is that a whisper shout? Yes. <laughs> uh, you're muted, uh, Max. Annie? Around whisper the corner, there's a living plant in, in between me and the hallway. There's a giant living plant in the center of this room. It looks tentacly and I kind of don't want to be near it. And I'll just uh, cautiously maneuver myself to where Annie's voice is coming from. Uh, unfortunately, right now, the peacock and the salmon are kind of blocking that uh, doorway, I think, on that. Okay. Uh, actually, no, sorry. It's wide enough. You can go around them. Um, so there's a space over this side where you can kind of pass through. The salmon is in the hallway, but doesn't seem to be taking any aggressive action. Again, the two of them are just sort of laughing as though they've just shared a really fantastic joke. Uh, but they're laughing vigorously and continuously. I'll just... <laughs> as I walk by. <laughs> and you see on the other side of this plant, which is taken up the majority of the hallway, um, you can see... Actually, you just stepped into the plant. Oh. Well, I didn't see the plant there, but you can see the, the <laughs> hopefully you can make out the plant there between you and you see okay, it on the I other see it side. Now, yeah. Neither of the two of you seem to be affected at the moment. Um, certainly not in the way that you've just seen the peacock and the salmon be overtaken by their masked versions and not laughing my either. My mask is not attached to me. Doesn't seem. Yeah, to mine be. isn't either. 
So um, it's like they got transformed into whatever the mask was representing. From there as well, because of your own glow, you can just make out down the hall a, a uh, sort of um, hissing laugh just in the darkness beyond you. You don't have uh, dark vision, do you? Yeah. Okay. I'm the only one who doesn't. Oh, right. So you can make out a sort of hissing laugh down the hallway, and you see a... Uh, a Despite your dark vision, there's sort of enough darkness here that you see the sort of coiled, um, long head of a snake uh, hovering above almost uh, eight feet, uh, leading into a humanoid body. And you see sort of the, the shimmering scales picking up a little bit, perhaps, of your own light and the sort of hissing laughter from the top of the head. I think That's actually the north of the map, right? Pardon? That's uh, north on the map? That's <laughs> south on the map, in fact. Okay. Uh, down in around this area. Okay. Uh, and... Yeah, as you're standing there talking about the plant, you do see someone coming down the hallway. And it's strange because they have sort of white feathers on their arms, and they're kind of flapping a little bit. And this... this um, um, long, thin, white neck with a broad, uh, be a broad, yeah, I think it's like a broad yellow uh, beak on the end uh, comes sort of charging down in your direction, and you see uh, the uh, the white swan, the woman formerly known as the white swan, half transformed and kind of looking and coming straight at you angrily. The same sort of fury in their eyes. Towards me or towards Towards you. The people laughing. You seem to be the first thing in the way. Alright. Um, I'll try to get out of her way. Okay. She will try to peck at you. Oops. Uh does an eleven hit your current AC? It does. <laughs> you take one point of of uh, bludgeoning damage as the beak kind of snaps down and uh, kind of pecks at you. It's it's annoying, but not really all that dangerous. Um, but it seems to be persistent. And you see, uh, Annie, from your perspective, just this sort of very tall, uh, large white swan neck kind of nip out and bonk uh, Medric on the, on the side of the head. This is weird. I'll try to, I'll try to restrain her. Okay, make a grab attack. Grab attack, that's just a regular attack, right? Uh, you can use athletics or acrobatics. Athletics, because I have a decent score for that. Plus my modify, plus my proficiency, or no? If you're proficient in, in that, yes. It's yes. already factored in if you have right. it on your sheet, right? 25. 25 beats the 15, so you kind of easily are able... Describe to me how you're restraining this human-sized half uh, white swan. I'm, like, grabbing the neck next to the head, so right. it doesn't, like, come down on my face. <laughs> okay. And uh, at the same time, I'm, like, grabbing one arm and shifting my weight to all one side and kind of, like, nudging her along to go past me. <laughs> okay. So you're kind of shoving, shoving them down towards the uh, salmon and the peacock? Uh, towards the north of the hallway. So back where they came from. I thought she came from the south. No, she came from the north. This was oh, the okay. second person you noticed. And then they gotcha. noticed you, because you, you are a beacon in the night. Right, right. It's the one danger of being, uh, of being uh, you know, light, lit up all the time. Yeah, I'll send her towards the salmon and the peacock. Okay. Easily done. And in fact, as you kind of do that, they, they, they sort of move out of the way. It's, it's not, not uh, uh, entirely like they're, they're unthinking, but it's more of when you, when you insert a block into one end of the tube, the block comes out the other. It's yeah. not so much a thinking motion so much as just there's displacement involved. Uh, and as soon as you do that, are you letting go or are you going to... Uh, <laughs> Or are you holding? I'm gonna let her go because I, I don't want to get into a fight right now. I just okay. want to find out what's going on. And a, okay. and like a, I want to get find out what's going on. And B, I want to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> okay. I think now is an appropriate time to switch over to Silas and see what uh, okay. he's up to. Silas, 
Silas is going to try and force his way through the door. Okay. Make a right now. Dudek and and uh, Wish don't seem like they're able to hurt each other, so we'll leave them alone. Okay. Wish has made no aggressive action, and Dudek is kind of hiding a little bit behind the pedestal that's there. And Wish's armor was so thick that Dudek wasn't doing anything. Pretty so much, yeah. So yes, Silas is going to try and force his way through the door. Okay. Um, how does uh, uh, how does Silas approach this? Is it a purely physical thing? Is there something else involved? Is there a conceptual notion that you're using? Yeah. Well, he knows that his will seems to have some effect on the place. So it doesn't seem to operate under our normal laws, our normal reality. Uh, he's gonna, he's going to focus on the door opening on its own and see if he can make it do that. Hmm. Okay. Um, make a. Hmm. Make an Arcana roll disadvantage 12 12 as you kind of try to to stretch your mind in that direction you once again sort of come in contact with this overwhelming force that seems to be surrounding and, and, and encasing everything um, kind of like it's a, a viscous covering over everything and you kind of push into it but it seems to be uh, a combination of, of, of almost rubber and cement somewhat pliable until it's not pliable at all and so the the door does not move at that particular point Okay, then he's just going to go physical and try to push his way through the door because it worked a little bit last time. Okay. Um, make an athletics check. Six. <laughs> Um, you do manage to push through the door. Uh, in fact, you kind of feel its its semi non physical presence, or maybe your own semi non physical presence. Um, you feel it's very slow moving when you when you move through it, um, almost as though you're trying to move through uh, cold water, uh, and this sends a shiver down your spine. Uh, you do take four points of bludgeoning damage. Uh, as you kind of experience this, but now you feel like for most thin walls like this or thin doors like this, if you concentrate, you should be able to move through it. So treat it as difficult terrain if you do want to move through a, a doorway again. Um, you have a feeling the walls might be a little more substantial. As you come emerge into the hallway, you see another, uh, well, not another, not for you, but you see a large uh, 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 bush or, or plant. It's more like fronds. It's more like uh, plants that seems to be kind of uh, sprouting up there. Um, you see on the far side of it, from where you are in particular, um, two shapes. Um, you see one which seems uh, boxy and uh, uh, kind of half light, half shadow. One side of it seems to have this, this streak of light color on its side and the other one seems to be darker browns going into into black uh, and it seems to be uh, uh, growling somewhat and you can see and you can kind of hear um, uh, uh, weirdly kind of growling almost very deep like a foghorn Beyond that, you see a figure with a large snake-like head that is hissing laughter high up into the sky, about eight feet tall, uh, down into a body. I will give you that you recognize that one, at least from the, the, the elaborate robes that she'd put together, the costume that she'd put together. You recognize that to be Odiga, but massively transformed. It takes you a second to think about the other one, which seems to be uh, uh, reaching out and, and uh, swiping with one bright yellow colored arm and then an arm colored, covered in shadow. Uh, and then you kind of recognize the, the weird shape of the pattern when it comes back to normal as almost that image of the lighthouse 
shining its light out of one side and then the darkness of the water on the other. And that makes you think of uh, Athanos. I'm sorry, not Athanos. Um, Angus. You're muted, sorry. Costume. Sorry? I don't, uh, Silas didn't see Angus in costume, so he might not know that that's oh, Angus. Okay, that's fair. So, yes, uh, this weird, strange sort of thing that reminds you of a lighthouse. Yeah, it's like a, he, like a he might of a think it's, uh, he actually might think it's, um, okay, I don't remember his name, but the guy that was running it. Um, the brain is saying James, but also that's Jonas. Wrong. Jonas. Jonas. Jonas so, yeah. yeah. Interesting. Well, that yeah, that kind of kind of solidifies what Silas was thinking about the masks. Um, does the lighthouse creature seem to be hurting Odega? Doesn't seem to be effectively hitting. It's almost as though the other one, despite the fact that they are hiss laughing constantly um they are conveniently just sort of swaying in a way that the other one is not able to with with slow movements uh come in contact with okay um can see the glow of the phoenix champion down the hallway uh yes i think you could see him from there you also see that he's holding on to what looks like a humanoid swan. Well, his glow is very dim, however. Hmm. Silas is going to. Sorry? Dimmer than usual? From Silas's perspective, yes. Okay. Um. Silas is going to see if he can float through the plants and the two uh, people, or if he's going to need to go around the long way. <clears throat> okay. Uh, give me a dexterity saving throw. Nice. 20. Nice. As you're moving through kind of like when you were interacting with with wish and trying to push the mask away you feel yourself kind of skirting the edge of that same that same force which seems to be overlaying everything uh, and before the force is able to take hold you're able to sort of withdraw um, you find that trying to move through the plants or the people um, is is very painful and very um, uh, repulsing like it's trying to trying to squeeze you out and you're able to kind of pull away, but move around them without too much other difficulty. Um, but you feel like moving through the living creatures might be more complicated than moving through the non-living door. Okay, he'll just go the long way around then. What's the long way? Oops, I'm moving the eye. <laughs> uh, just the other way down the hallway to get out around the other side of them. Okay. As soon as you get there, you see in front of you a uh, a pile of what look like uh, um, large mushrooms kind of growing rapidly, blocking off what looks like the front door. You also see in front of you, uh, let me bring up, whoops, too many screens. Um, I want more screens. You see kind of sitting um, languidly on top of one of the mushrooms, mushrooms, mushrooms. Oh boy, that would be fun. Uh, yeah, this mushroom. <laughs> you see this, this uh, probably about half your size, um, bulbish, blobbish humanoid, um, sitting kind of, uh, kind of relaxed um, um, across one of the, the, um, the uh, large mushrooms, um, looking relaxed, but also kind of looking amused at everything. This skin is um, uh, stretched and gray. Uh, the the uh, the body seems uh, stuffed and overgrown, uh, and it seems to be uh, picking off part of the mushroom and eating it quite happily. Uh, make a perception check as you stand there. And just as you're a moment as you come around the corner. Okay. 
Um, you notice that uh, while the creature is largely uh, naked, uh, it is also uh, uh, essentially genderless. It's like a it's like a toy almost. Uh, and you do notice a thin thread of what looks like a thread of green, which runs around one ankle and disappears somewhere into the uh, into the um, overgrowth. Um, you also notice that it looks directly at you and smiles with a mouthful that is almost exaggeratedly wide, uh, uh, sharp looking teeth. Ah, more food, it says. That ain't good. You also can hear growling around the corner and the vague green glow down the down the, the mm. large end of the center of the room. Well, Sans is just gonna say, no, not food. Fish uh, are friends, not yeah. food. Yeah, he'll take the uh, disengage. At, well, actually, first he'll try to just move through that corner. Okay. You find that you're able to, to kind of squeeze yourself in ways that don't feel entirely natural, but you're still maintaining a sense of body, but able to kind of squeeze yourself a little bit through there. Um, okay. It then watches you intently, and you also see there um, uh, a, uh, a wooden-headed duck person um, who seems to be shorter than you uh, and kind of uh, uh, quacks at you as you come around the corner. I hope well, we're geese because they're going to fuck us up. I'm going to take the disengage action. Okay. And uh, let's see, that was one, two, three, four, five. Um, that moving through that, that, that space of, of the... Um, of the mushrooms will be a uh, difficult terrain. It's essentially, there's sure. no way around them. You'll end up moving through them. Yeah, actually, you'll end up over this way. Okay. The duck kind of turns to watch you as you go around. Make a hmm. I'm going to call it insight in this case. Make an insight check at disadvantage. Okay. Twelve. There's something vaguely familiar about the wooden duck, but you aren't able to put your finger on it. The creature, the blobbish creature on the, on the mushroom, just kind of doesn't even really reach out to you as you pass by. Uh, well, it sort of reaches out with a feeble little hand, but but it's more like uh oh, than an attack. Effort. Effort. Hey, well. Silence's plan is just to keep disengaged and keep moving up towards where uh, he thinks uh, Medrick is. Okay. As you uh, are in the room, you also notice across the way, kind of curled up into a ball, what looks like a very large oversized cat, like almost like a black panther, but it seems to be asleep. That's over in this side. In the center of the room, you see uh, the enormous plant. Um, what you see is that the plant, unlike most everything else here, feels substantial to you. It feels as though it is it is fully formed, where everything else has a sort of ghost-like atmosphere to you. Um, you also make out uh, the uh, a horsey laugh, as a horse-headed humanoid on the other side seems to be laughing. And approaching them uh, rapidly is, let me see who is that? Uh, is a short uh, ram headed uh, with large horn to kind of butts into them. And again, they continue to laugh. That's over on the far left hand side. Wild party. The, Literally. Party. You can also just make out on the other side um, a sort of glittery uh, uh, pile of. Uh, it's like it's like a, an impressionist painting of a face, but made out of gemstones, with gemstones for eyes, large gemstones for cheeks, uh, gemstones for kind of glittering in the hair. Um, and that one, I can I'll have you make an insight check as well. You might recognize them. Again, something familiar, but not quite. You'll see the label up there, but 
just imagine your character hasn't actually noticed the label. Mm -hmm. um, and once more, you can kind of see um, the somewhat dimmed glow of Medric not too far away. Meanwhile, Medric's wrestling a, uh, a white swan, who she does not seem to be very happy about that, and is kind of wrestling with you, still kind of nipping away, but you have control over it. Actually, they can make I'm going to shove her like towards the other people. Okay. Uh, there will be kind one, of like... one opportunity attack, essentially. Okay. Uh, let's do... Yeah, no, that's terrible. My uh, no as, armor AC beats that. Hey, yeah, four is not going to be doing very much good. As there's kind of the the the, the neck keep bending and bending in odd ways, and you keep having to readjust your your arm to hold on to it as it kind of keeps trying to nip down at you. Uh, but you are able to to uh, to shove it uh, out, sort of through the door, and then it sort of sort of moves where it can it can uh, attack both, uh, and then from the perspective of. Silas, you see uh, someone come around the room, the, the glitter-faced person, and they are now kind of intent on attacking uh, the uh, salmon and the peacock. It's kind of cornering them there. The peacock and the salmon seem to be paying no attention to them, just having their, their continuous strange laugh. Sorry, Ocean. <laughs> if you're still Ocean. Sorry, not sorry. Yeah. Um... Well, I need to get out from behind this plant, so I'm going to take Vice out. Okay. Um, it and glows slightly. I mean, it was not I mean, known to glow before much. I think actually Vice no, did glow a little bit, but... No, it does emit light in, in complete darkness. Okay. I'll cast Sacred Flame on the plant, too. Because I, I, I've used it as a, as a torch oh, multiple right. times. Uh, what is the radius of its light? I want to say... Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. I think it's 10 feet. It glows as bright as a torch is cool. the exact wording of it. Oh, great. Uh, um, so it, it, it glows dimly. Uh, the blade glows slightly, a dull blue glow that never seems to diminish. The light is not strong enough to be seen by, uh, by except in complete darkness where it glows as bright as a torch. Okay. In this case, it does glow slightly, so you'll probably see a little bit more as I've basically turned on light around you. Perfect. And... Uh, Medric, you're attacking the plant at the same time? Yeah, I'll cast Secret Flame on it. It might get a it save. <laughs> uh, it fails. It's a plant. It doesn't move. <laughs> it's 2d6, I believe. Where is, I, I was just looking at it. Yeah, you can go ahead okay. and make an attack roll with advantage on the plant if you want to, uh, Annie. 19. So 7 damage. Okay, roll damage, uh, Annie, as well. And Medric is flanking it. Do I get sneak attack? Sure. <laughs> sneak attack on the plant. Absolutely. Sneak, sneak. Oh, it already calculated it in it. In it. Never mind. Okay. Um, uh, so, uh, seven piercing damage. Um, I attacked after Medric, so, uh, one force damage and 20 sneak attack damage, so 28. Okay, just gonna look up here. Ignore the second sneak attack damage, I forgot that I actually had it all set up. Yeah. No mo me, okay. no mo plant. So the column of fire erupts in the center of this. The thing kind of kind of uh, wavers and and almost in terror wavers at uh, the 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 sense of it, uh, and then snicker snack the uh, the thin little blade uh, starts to carve away at some of the central stalks within this thing, uh, and it uh, I can't take it off the map because it's actually part of the map, but uh, it does sort of wither and withdraw and. 
In fact, Medrig, you see it withdraw into uh, down the hallway uh, and seem to uh, withdraw into that room you had been in before. Okay. The, the room with plants itself. Um, and then... There's a huge plant in the center of the room. Indeed, I guess there's one which there too. seems to be somewhat disturbed. Um, I forgot to put a link to that one. There we go. Uh, I wish we had a druid right now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's only so much you now. can. There's only so much you can do with hostile plants. They, yeah, they I suppose, tend sure. to not be reasonable. And, and a druid might very well just faint with the awfulness of this place as well. Uh, however, um, you do feel or do see kind of and hear, and in fact, Silas sees it as well, as a tendril of that central plant uh, comes spinning out towards Medric. Does a 15 hit? Yes. And oof. 15 bludgeoning damage. God damn. As it smacks you on the side. Uh, make a... Uh, Let's see. Make a athletics or acrobatics as the vine appears to be trying to grapple you. Well, that's going to be athletics because I have like an actual mod for that. Come on. 19. Whew. 19 is enough as you manage to kind of avoid it uh, gripping onto you. But it seems Where's to Silas? Me... He has the bag of holding. We can get some equipment. <laughs> More than a dagger. He seems... Uh, the, the You, you kind of sidestep it, and while it seemed to have made that attack, it does not follow up with the second one, but does seem to be a little more wary of things now. Um, Silas, you see the, the, the light of the Phoenix Champion uh, dulled slightly as a massive tendril from this plant comes emerging out and kind of smacking on him. We probably you also can't see kill this. Thing? All right, so. Hmm. And Annie's like, where's Silas? He has the bag of holding with him. And I think he has your shield with him, if I remember correctly. He's got all our stuff, I believe. He's got all our stuff. He's got whatever was in the bag of holding. Did I put my armor in the bag of holding? I forget. Probably not. <laughs> Damn it. Um, you had said that you had um, Medric's shield with you. Okay. Because I, I remember like being, you have the bag of holding, put it in there. I could I could see where you would probably load it up with anything you might think is essential. So I'm not too worried about you know specifics. If you say you put 500 pounds of gold in it, that might be a problem. But uh, considering that we don't have 500 pounds of gold, I mean that would also be a problem. <laughs> um, so uh, Silas, you see that action happen. What do you do? Going to continue well, your cautious move up there. Yep. Continue dis disengaging and moving up. Okay. I'm going to step distracted. over the, the thing. You hear a, a, a clack, almost like a wooden shoe kicking in something and realize it's the wooden mouth of the of the uh, the wooden duck kind of clacking closed behind you. It, it seems to me it seems to follow you. Um, actually, sorry, no, it doesn't react at all. Never mind. It does not react at all. My mistake. Um, as Annie comes out of the hallway and Medric is there, kind of reeling perhaps a little bit from that strike, you see yes. both of them, uh, Silas. Neither Annie nor uh, Medric see anyone else. You don't see Silas? You do not. Got Silas will say, Hi, how are you guys doing? We, we should go find Silas. Yeah, we should. I'll need a perception check from both Annie and Medric, please. Perception. Ten. Ten. <laughs> <laughs> yep. They don't seem to have heard you, Silas. Well, shit. <laughs> well... <laughs> Scream louder. <laughs> does Silas hear us, though? Like, saying we have to find Silas? You do hear them, yes. It does mm -hmm. feel a little distorted, but you do actually hear them clearly enough. He's going to take out the Book of Shadows and write to them, I'm standing right in front of you, but I think I might be a ghost. So both, uh, well, which one do you do that first? Because it's one at a time. No, no, we had just, uh, remember we had decided that he could send out to a group. 
Oh, they okay. just can't talk to each other. So both Group of chat, you almost. hear that sort of ghostly voice in your head. I don't remember if we decided what it sounds like because it's written down, so it's kind of weird. It would uh, probably just be sound like his voice. Or maybe words, a bit more mechanical. Maybe words float in front of your vision that you know to be the the what's written in the book. So ghostly voice or ghostly uh, words kind of hover in front of you, slightly different from the usual effect you're expecting from this. Uh, as you see the 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 what you know to be Silas, you know without with with, an, with complete certainty, I'm right here. I may be a ghost. What? Did oh you great! Get killed. I'll respond. Did you get killed? Right back. No. People seem to be have become things that they were disguised as. Right back. Yes. Except I was you, an illusion. Oh goodness. Oh shit. But at least you seem to still have your brain. So that's a good thing. Yes, everybody. Uh, he'll write to them. Everybody. Everyone seems to be in two groups: either laughing maniacally and ignoring everything else, or trying to attack those who are laughing maniacally with like little sharp fingers. I'll look outside uh, or, or out in the main room. Is the plant attacking the laughing and growling people at all? Or nope. It seems to have recited. Uh, re re rescinded back to its its original sort of waving in an invisible wind state. Okay. So the plant seems to only attack us or maybe attack me because I hit it with fire. And are, is the white, the white swan and the small jewel mask person, are they attacking each other or just the laughing ones? They're attacking the laughing ones. So you okay. can see now there's a number of small scratches across the salmon and a few uh, across the... Uh, the peacock as well. It doesn't seem to be slowing down their laughter at all. Uh, Silas will say to them, uh, there's some kind of entity here that's controlling things. When I tried to stop people from fighting or control them, it pushed me back. This whole place might be some sort of entity. If you resisted it, that may be why it's fighting you. That's fair. Well, I did light it on fire a little bit. Well, you also don't look like your masks. You must have fought it off. Or maybe... Maybe this entity, if, if that's what it is, wants to talk to us and just intentionally left, left us out of the spell or whatever it is. But it didn't, it, if that was the case, it, it didn't leave Medgar. No, it, uh, well, I remember when, uh, when, we, yeah, when we get shifted over, uh, you guys had to make a wisdom save and I think you guys succeeded. So you may have felt something when you were being transposed yeah and both of you True. kind of feel uh, I described it earlier from Edric that same sort of sense of transference uh, a planar transference perhaps uh, and yes there was something encroaching but both of you were able to shake it off we should go to the Baron's room or wherever the Baron was last or the Baroness the Baroness wasn't in, in the main room the Baron was in the Room fighting shad the shadow and panthers. He was fighting to the main ballroom, like the one over there, and he'll point to the panther that's curled up on the floor over there. In fact, exactly. it's hard to tell because it's so dark, but you actually see another one curled up on the stairs. It looks like it's asleep. They're very large. Yeah. They are the size of panthers, but they're kind of acting like house cats right now. Okay, yeah, let's not wake those up. Silas is going to look at the other angry, attacky ones and see if they seem to have teeth or claws, like Dudek had claws. Um, which ones do you want to take a look at? The, there's the white swan and the jeweled face not far away. 
you also see on the far side of Lake Odega, there's that that uh, moving portrait of a lighthouse. Yeah, White Swan looks easiest to see right now, so okay, he'll just go over and take a look. Uh, as you look, it, it does not appear to have fangs. In fact, the, the arms are almost subsumed into large plumes of feathers. The, the head is this thin, long, elongated, uh, swan-like neck, and it appears to be attacking just with its, its uh, beak, just picking away. Hmm. Well... He'll write to the others. They don't seem to notice me. I mean, no. we don't either, so it makes sense. Yeah. One of them did. Uh, down there, there was one sitting on a mushroom, eating bits of mushroom that s thought I was food. Weird. Was it a transformed party guest or something else entirely? I don't know. It was very blob-like, but... I mean, it could be. I don't. I didn't see most of the the guests' masks, so maybe there was one that had a jellyfish or something. Um, uh, does that does that make me think of anybody? Um, Annie, you you get a pretty good look at just about all the guests. There was nothing blobbish, except maybe uh, Odega's, uh, or sorry, not Odega, Athenos's weird uh, swamp creature, large <laughs> netting thing. That was probably the closest to a blob, really. So it doesn't really sound like anybody you saw. Yeah, no, I don't think there was anybody dressed like anything blob-like, except maybe um, one of the one of your relatives. That's the most blob-like that that was here. Mm. Yeah, I, I, if it's Athenos you're thinking of, I didn't, I, I didn't notice any nets or any of the other little bobbers or anything with it. So it may be something that's native to this plane maybe maybe that's why it can see me um, maybe but Silas is going to keep using the disengage action as he uh, tries to move up I don't like this going to move past the plant uh -oh. the plant does seem to react to you a little bit um, yeah. In almost a curious manner, but doesn't seem to be threatened by you at the moment. Uh, but it is definitely taking some sort of attitude of, of wariness as you pass by it. Uh, and again, kind of moving through it at all feels uh, very, very difficult. Um, as though you are, are trying to merge with it rather than moving through it. Yeah, he's, try he's trying more to move around it, like he's moving around a tree, but yeah. Okay. As um, you move there, you can see now that the doorways between the uh, the foyer and the little hallway and the ballroom are open. In the far end, you see another collection of glowing um, spaces. Um, you see, uh, let me see where you are at. Yeah, you can make it out. The room seems to be filled at one point with a mass of thorny vines that seem to have, have split the room in two. Amongst the vines, you see the the shape of the Baroness, very recognizable, wrapped up and uh, uh, looking a little bit unconscious. I mean, a little bit unconscious is a stupid thing to say. Looking <laughs> unconscious, um, wrapped up, not resisting, um, standing uh, over to one side, you see the creature you had seen before, uh, that small, uh, what somebody just called a closet, seems to be here, uh, hopping from foot to foot. On the other side, uh, barely noticeable in the bright green glow that seems to be merging from this room, um, you see a tall, slender, uh, feminine figure um, dressed in a, oh, let me just go back to my party notes. Um, Dressed in, where is her name? Uh, mm -mm. Yeah, I remember she was Arduin State, but I don't remember what her name was. Uh, I don't know if you ever caught her name specifically. Um, no, Silas. Yellow Lace Lady. 
Yellow lace, thank you. That's what I was trying to think of. Yes, with a, an elaborate uh, mask, uh, which is uh, kind of glows a little bit, or if it's, it's maybe it's the, the bright green light that's behind it. Everything seems strangely muted to you as well. And she seems to be standing there, sort of, you know, with that uh, uh, one leg, uh, one hip kind of cocked, contemplative sort of stance, looking at the Baroness, um, while the little creature is, is sort of dancing from foot to foot, almost excited uh, near her feet. Silas will write them and say, was there a guest wearing a yellow lace mask? Because she seems to have a closet and she's got the Baroness unconscious. That was Ar Erdwin's partner. That was. You saw her yeah. a couple of times. Uh, she was rejected from going into the Baron's moot or the Baron's meeting uh, and kind of had generally been, been moving around, but you never actually interacted with her. And she's not cackling madly, is she? Nope, seems to be quietly or, contemplating the Baroness at the moment. At least that's the, the impression yeah. you have. She doesn't seem to be controlled either. Uh, yeah, I think we found a point of interest. Uh, we should go have a chat. Yeah, Silas is heading in. I'm going to head in, but I'm going to avoid the plant by going this way. <laughs> yeah, same. Okay. Um. As you pass by that door, you're able to see uh, some of the people in that room. Uh, you see sitting on the table in the uh, dining room. Uh, let me see here. Who is that? Uh, you see... You see this strange creature. Uh, about a little bit larger than the average dwarf, but it, it's uh, gray and furred. It has long pointed ears that stick out at its side. It has a, a sort of uh, a, an animalistic uh, face. Um, to humans, to us in our world, it would be described as monkey-like, as you can see it kind of sitting down with squat <laughs> legs and uh, it, it, uh, feet that look almost like hands. Um, at this point, it um, looks like it's surrounded by a, uh, a number of small, uh, shiny things, which is picking up one at a time and kind of holding up to an eye and then kind of tossing it over its shoulder or sometimes pushing it down closer. Um, you also see in that room, um, on the far side, you see the uh, wooden goose. Uh, this is a, a feminine form, but has a, a different uh, uh, sort of almost beautiful array of feathers around like a, a like a feathered shawl almost uh and the 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 head is honk is is thrown back in a, in a honking constant laugh just uh, on the other side you also see kind of squawking uh a a smaller bird-like person uh who is um kind of ruffling their feathers and kind of in in a weird sort of sing-songy way, almost like they're responding to the other laugh, but in this sort of deep-throated kind of going on and on. And then just on the edge of that, you see kind of uh, um, lurking down low um, with... Uh, hands outstretched and uh, what look like almost snakes outstretched from be from below the head. Uh, you see uh, someone with this almost squid-like head approaching the gull as if to uh, to attack it sort of carefully and stealthily. Um, the monkey-like creature on the inside um, kind of looks out through the door, unless you're being stealthy, which I don't think you were kind of specifically being stealthy, uh, looks out the door. I was and trying kind of, to avoid stuff, but yeah. I wasn't thinking about hiding. From uh, it tilts stuff, its so. head kind of as it sort of sees you in the doorway, at least briefly. It probably saw maybe the, the brighter uh, red glow or the yellow-orange glow of Medric moving first as you passed by that area. So that's what you guys see there. Um, uh, 
Silas you see in front of you, kind of standing in the hallway, laughing in, in, a, in a weird sort of way, uh, is a pile of seashells in the shape of a woman. And it's almost laughing in terms of clattering all over the body. Every time there's a laugh, it's like a thousand uh, shells all clatter together and make the sound. Um, further well. down the hallway that uh, Annie and Medrick are in, you actually see something kind of moving, very, something very small moving towards the ballroom and then, and then kind of pushed back, like falls, falls. It's hard to make out detail from this distance, but that's what you notice. You're muted, uh, Marie. I'm going to keep going forward. Okay. And you kind of converge in that hallway. You can see again the seashells person not taking any offensive stance, just this weird clattering of shells uh, in, a, in a weird laughing manner. Now, let's see. How perceptive are they? Quite. Um, as you see, as you kind of approach that room and start to scan in the room, the little creature, which you recognize as the form, at least the same shape of the closet you had seen before, it's been hopping back and forth in a weird, maybe excited, maybe happy, maybe uh, uh, energetic way. Uh, it kind of stops and it turns its head towards the door. Uh, and it seems to have uh, looked and scanned uh, and seen uh, the approaching movement, maybe the, the bright light of, of Medrick first. Um, and then it kind of uh, whispers, uh, or actually kind of cackles, uh, Mistress, others are here. Others are here. And the woman turns around. The woman in yellow. The woman in yellow, who you can barely make out. I'll move her a little farther out of the light so you can probably make her out a little bit better. Um, but she kind of turns and, and again, kind of very gracefully, very tall and lithe, um, wearing this yellow laced math, uh, mask. Mask. Yes. That's scary. <laughs> yeah. Wearing yellow laced <laughs> I don't know what that is. Yeah. Calculus. Um, <laughs> I will derive you. Uh, uh, I will just derive you and say, I will, uh, anyway, uh, just kind of turns around and, and languidly is holding one arm under the other and kind of contemplating things and kind of looking at, at you. Well, 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 it's a very smooth voice. What do we have here? Does anybody respond or move or do anything? Silas is going to try to sneak into the room, hoping that she doesn't see him. Okay. Um, make a stealth check with disadvantage. Seven. It seems to so be working here. just fine until you notice that the little creature is staring right at you. Oh, oh. And then she seems to be kind of glancing, and she's glancing at three different locations, kind of seeing, scanning from you to the others, uh, maybe even looking directly at Silas with a little bit more amusement on her face. I'll stop sneaking at that point. Okay. I'll step into the room and say, so it's you who's been causing trouble tonight. Me? Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not causing trouble. I'm just trying to equalize things a bit. And who might you really be? And you get the sense that there's a spell cast and a look of surprise crosses her face. Interesting. You are not what you appear to be. If that had anything to do with reading my mind or reading uh my what is it bring up detect us yep yeah so if, if it had anything to do with that it fails apparently so because of my ring apparently so not a common item for a uh, a random citizen yep and you phoenix champion it's yes. interesting to see you here. 
It's interesting to be here, also. Maybe that annoying little ball of flame actually protected you a little bit. And as for you, and sort of looks over towards Silas, my, my, my. As Silas is trying to quietly walk around the closet without being noticed. Yeah, and the closet is literally just sort of watching Silas and turning with him. Um, it's interesting, yes. is it not, how magic interacts? I should have been more specific, perhaps. Why well, are we here? Now, now you know. Indeed. Learning is always useful. Why are you here? Simply put, you weren't really supposed to be here. You were meant to join the other rabble in the animalistic instincts. I mean, why are we, like, not just us three, but the specific people that were invited at the party? Why were you at the party? I can't speak to that. That would be her doing, and she kind of uh, gestures over her shoulder at the the sort of prone figure of the Baroness, which you can now see the, 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 the thorns and vines are actually kind of turning her in place. She still seems to be unconscious, but it's almost like it's trying to turn her to be standing in, in, in place. These vines and thorns appear to be meters thick. Sneaky, sneaky, sneak. Okay. As you get closer to these these thorns and vines, you see them kind of turn their thorns towards you. He does not attempt to enter the thorns. Probably good. Uh, you do hear from the other side, uh, from where you are, um, you, you hear kind of a thump, flap, 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 thump, flap, 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 as you kind of see a crow or sorry, a large raven, which the other two would actually recognize as well. A large raven kind of uh, leaping towards the open doorway and hitting something and then pushing back and then trying again and then floating up with the wings and trying to scratch with their their uh, claws, but not even much, much, much effort. Um, you also probably notice it's, it's a little harder to see from this angle, but you see on the other side something similar in that open doorway where there does not seem to be anything. Uh, you see what looks like a large bullfrog jumping and kind of bashing into the, the area to try to, to move through it, I guess. Typical frog behavior, um, I can confirm. You also, from your perspective, Silas, as you get closer to it, um, you do detect a sort of shimmering over the open doorway as though it is it is actually a wall of some kind. Cool. I have issues to deal with with the hmm, Baroness. But I don't have any issues with you all. Not at the moment, unless you wish to do some deals. I'm sure that we could work something out that's very lucrative. I'm not interested, thanks. Uh, who are you, and... I, I, like, player forgot what he was going to ask. That's fair. Herp did herp. Elevator music in my mind, loading. <laughs> <laughs> into a room and then forgot what he was doing. Oh, yeah. Yes. The pull theory. Yes, absolutely. No, I had like a good question. Right, right, right. Uh, so uh, how did the Baron and the Baroness's health improve? I'm assuming you were involved in some way. My, like, my, my. In the back of Medrick's mind, it's like he knows, like, he's beginning to think she's probably a hag. Aren't you the inquisitive one? Is that the path you'll take towards your little ball of fire? To become the one who asks all the questions in the hardest possible way? Or are you going to be something else of a different kind of pawn for that gaseous bag? Is there a role for, like, control your temper? <laughs> <laughs> um... I mean, yes, but the, it isn't necessarily. Uh, you could you could just control your temper if you want to. Medrick will just clench Medrick his fist. Medrick might be a little hot headed, so to speak. Yeah. Um, like I know you're just trying to get a rise out of me, and it's not going to work. Oh, uh, how dull! And here I thought that the legendary, fiery warriors of the big light disc were fearsome. Never mattered. I am in a controlled manner. Who are you, anyway? Who am I? Isn't that the question of the day? 
Let's just say I'm an interested party that was left out of a very lucrative deal. And her voice kind of shifts a little bit from that soft feminine form into this slightly, uh, slightly slimier, slightly uh, more uh, bassy tone, as if it's shifting a little bit. Lucrative deal, such as what was the deal? Oh, what are all deals for? Control, power, knowledge, domains of interest. We'd be familiar with all of those, I'm sure. Did someone no, say... No, not really. Um, and she does seem to hear Silas, even though the other two do not. Yeah. Um, so you were involved with the death of the god? No. <laughs> If only I had gotten in on a piece of that action. No, I'm afraid not. They didn't invite me, so I'm just taking advantage of the chaos left behind. It's very entertaining. Silas will say in abyssal, Where are you from? The two of you hear this voice come uh, come out of nowhere. Uh, it's it's hard to hear, like not only because it seems to be quiet and coming from nowhere, but it almost feels like it's like it's dripping into your ear rather than actually being spoken. And she turns with a delighted eye towards uh, this empty space, which you know to be Silas, or Silas knows to be Silas, and responds in abyssal. This time, though, this, the response is stronger. It's, it's, it's more true abyssal, perhaps. Uh, and I will have uh, both uh, Medric and Annie make a wisdom saving throw. Uh, uh, wait, wisdom is my good stat. One of my good As stats. she responds. Uh, and I've forgotten the essence of the I question. Jinxed it. I got a seven. <laughs> Sorry, the essence of the question was... Uh, he asked her where she was from. Uh, far beyond the mortal planes, perhaps, but mostly by choice. My origins are beyond your mortal understandings, after all. Um, and for both uh, Annie and... Uh, Medric, you take one point of psychic damage just hearing this conversation. And it really only seems to be on the responses while the, the phrases that, that uh, uh, are coming from nowhere but strangely sort of recognizable as Silas's voice while they feel dirty as they crawl into your ears, hers feel like they've got power behind them. So, are you going to try to interfere, or can I have my discussion with my party? She seems very angry towards the Baroness. Silas is trying to get a look at the Baroness through the five feet of foliage. Okay. How does she look? Like, is she... You kind of froze. Open to paralyzed. Sorry, I had uh, heard. How does she look? And that's it. Uh, unconscious, badly hurt, uh, eyes open but paralyzed. Uh, Make a perception check, because it's hard to get that close to her, given how thick this stuff is. Uh, I will say too that on the in the far area, you also make out a couple of figures. The, probably the band, which seem to be doubled over in laughter, but it seems to be muted somewhat from this distance. Uh, okay, she appears to be non-moving, not dead, um, but you can see that these 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 uh, uh, vines with their large thorns have wrapped around her. Several of them kind of piercing into her. Um, her eyes seem to be fluttering as if she's coming awake and she's being being forcibly oriented to be standing up. It doesn't seem to be uh, fighting back against it for the moment. Seems to be breathing. Um, the mask that she was wearing seems to have been cast aside. So you see the Baroness as she is. 
and you actually can see the the mask kind of drifted a few feet away that large that sort of greenish um large long snout of a of a dragon mask that she was wearing i believe you said something about a deal with us what are you offering do you say that in the normal the common tongue or in abyssal again uh, in Abyssal. Best okay. to keep this from the rest of the party until we figure out what's going on. So once again, you don't understand Indeed. the words, <laughs> but you kind of feel the sense of the of the words crawling into your mind. Uh, and she turns kind of quickly to face where Silas is. You assume that's probably what she's doing. The, the voice came from almost nowhere uh, and answers. Uh, once again, I'll need a wisdom saving throw from the other can two. Can I cover my ears as soon as I see your mouth start moving? You certainly can. Make a dexterity saving throw huh. instead. Wait, uh, damn it. <laughs> Can I make um, the wisdom one? <laughs> I mean, if you, if you want physical action, it's either it's either going to be a dexterity saving throw or... So a, dexterity uh, is a six, so then her voice gets into me, then the wisdom saving throw is 14. <laughs> um, so the 14 is a save, so you only take half. Uh, a... a Eight is not, so you take four points of psychic damage. Is this language yeah. itself, just the presence of this language, feels like it's destroying you. Uh, Silas, you don't have any issue with this. Uh, the, the language does not seem to bother you at all. Uh, it may have something to do with the fact that you already know it, and you know the sense of it. Or it could be something to do with your patron. Uh, but she answers, uh, Yes, I thought I'd entered into a deal in good faith. But I was backstabbed and robbed, and so I'm going to take my revenge, my own deals. They are not going to have any part of this one. And she kind of gestures towards the still kind of constantly thumping of the two creatures that are outside the door. One kind of directly looking at it, and the other one kind of tilting her head to indicate the other side. I need to leave this room. This language is like bothering me. And I'll leave the room. Okay. I'll try to investigate this uh, raven banging at the door, though. Okay. As you round the corner there, hang on. As you round the corner, uh, you do see uh, what looks like a, a a lion almost from the head upward, but you see these these uh, these wings sprouted out behind, kind of attached to hands that are large claws. As a griffin person, seeing you there, if you don't take evasive maneuvers, is going to try to attack you. Yeah, I'll take evasive maneuvers. Okay. So where's a griffin? Um, so as you came around the corner, it's right there. Okay. Yeah, I'll just back away. I need to. Uh, I need to move some eyes. <laughs> there we go. I'm while go the um, while she seems to be discussing with Silas, I'm going to uh, try to stealthily get out of the room as well. Okay. You can make a stealth check if you want. There's nothing really to hide behind, <laughs> so it's a disadvantage. But, but basi basically, I'm, I'm trying to like quietly leave without her noticing more okay. than hide. Okay. She doesn't seem to be paying too much attention to you. You notice that the little, the little creature though is kind of watching you and was watching the door, watching the two of you. Now that she's paying attention to something else, presumably Silas. Um, when you enter the, that hallway as well, uh, Medric, you notice another one of these large panthers in the hallway, curled up, sleeping. Okay. At the far end, you do see this this bird still desperately trying to to crack through. I'm assuming the bird is the Baron. You can make all the assumptions you want. I'm not going to tell you one way or the other. Yeah. Um, where are you going, uh, Annie? Because you're still in the room, according to the map. Um, I'm going to back out and follow Silas. Cause, or not Silas Medrick. Apparently, I'm mixing you two up today. <laughs> Um, don't split the party more than, than we have to. However, Silas is invisible to us, so we can't keep him, so we can't keep an eye on him. There's a griffin around the corner and it's going to attack whoever walks out. Oh, lovely. And you never actually met whoever was wearing a griffin mask, so you don't have any idea who this is. So, my little friend, 
Do you want to make a deal with me? Do you want to leave that uh, distant cousin behind? She's so tawdry in what she wants. Or maybe you'd like to invite her closer. I do have magical means, and she kind of gestures at what's going on around. I may be able to get you passage. Get me passage to her or her passage to me? Whatever you'd like. You moving to her might be easier. Her moving to this plane, the normal plane anyway, might be more difficult. Much more power would be required. A few more sacrifices, maybe. Hmm. I'll consider it. What do you want with the Baroness other than torture? Oh, torture is just for fun. I want her to submit to me. I want her power to be mine. I want my circle back again. And she seems to get really angry. And there's a strange shift in the body form uh, where it moves away from this sort of graceful, uh, lang uh, long-legged, uh, almost dancer-like form uh, into something a lot more menacing for, for a brief second. What circle? You mean that that was, well, that that brought us here? I assume brought us here? Or she something kind of, else? She kind of pauses for a moment, thinks, and then laughs. Oh, no, no, no. That was merely an instrument. A convenience that they happened to place in a very appropriate spot for me. No, 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 no. I was once one of three, a powerful circle, and together we had plans. And I can't entirely blame them for taking opportunities where they arise, but they should know better than I would simply take it as given. They let me out of my circle. So I'm making my own now. And Scale Croaker over there, she'll become my tool, friend, accomplice. And when she says Scale Croaker, she kind of indicates towards the Baroness. Hmm. Now, we talked a bit about what Silas knew about hags and such when he was first coming into the building. Mm -hmm. Would he recognize that circle of three as being a haggish thing? Make an arcana check with advantage. Mm, Twelve. There are a lot of numerical powers. Three is a very, very powerful number. It's sort of the minimum amount to to create a uh, a, a a balanced circle of power. Um, they are used by multiples. They're used sometimes in diagrams. Um, from what you remember, uh, a hag's uh, a circle is often three people, um, but whether that's what she's referring to or not is hard to discern. So your previous sisters left you behind. Oh, it would have been so much easier if they had tried that instead. And her voice continues to shift into the lower register. But no, they not only wanted to leave me, they wanted to leave me imprisoned. And that was a mistake. No prison can hold me. Hmm. I'm the maker of prisons. So, you're coming after the Baroness and I assume the Baron because they had made a deal with your sisters? The Baron is interesting, I'll admit, but not that interesting, really. A mere pawn. That was my thought. But this one, Scale Croaker, is much more interesting. 
Is she one of your sisters? No, not yet. But she will be. And there's an increasing level of anger. Hmm. Meanwhile, in the hallway, what are Medrick and Annie getting up to? Um, I'll tell Medrick I'll go first. Um, and I'll, um, um, sneak by, try to sneak by the griffin. Um, I'm going to take a, a defensive stance and like smush myself against the, the corner of the wall. Okay. Just beyond where the griffin is, you also see what looks like a really tall person with brilliant purple and uh, red feathers uh, and a very majestic sort of large beak uh, standing and kind of uh, their chest is heaving outward. You know, when some birds have, have mating calls, it kind of looks like that. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, kind of beating their chest and giving this, this sort of low, low call every once in a while that in the weird way that everything around here feels, does feel kind of like laughter. Uh, and uh, you kind of realize that the, that the beak has a ruffled kind of, uh, a, rump, uh, a rough kind of texture. Uh, and you recognize, weirdly, Maximus who was wearing these extraordinarily beautiful uh, red and purple feathers. But he's tall in this form, almost eight feet, 12, almost eight to nine feet tall, rather, nearly touching the ceiling, but extraordinarily proud and sort of strut laughing around. Maybe get the griffin to attack that guy or... <laughs> Yeah, I'm going. I'm going to stand here. Um, like, like I said, I'm. Go I am going to try to like around the corner, but I am still entering its range. So. Okay. Uh, if you take the disengage action, you can move through without having a chance to attack you. I'm trying to provoke the attack of opportunity. Okay. Then it will definitely take it. <laughs> because uh, that way, it can't hit, hit Medric, who's kind of looked better. Yeah. <laughs> look better. Yeah. Let's see here. Uh, where did you go? Not twenty. Yep. Damn. Uh, so you take two slashing damage. <laughs> But it's kind of like it just sort of it just sort of just as you were you were moving out of the way and you kind of leaned forward just a little bit to get around the corner, it kind of leaned forward at the same time and slashed right across the face, leaving small trickle of of, of three th thin lines across your face. It stings. It's not really life threatening at this point, but it stings, and it kind of uh, growls with satisfaction. I will um, uncanny dodge and take one. Okay. <laughs> I, f I feel like it, it, it works with, with the, I, I, I am one with the wall. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. You learn, you figure just to turn your head just at the right last moment that it just nicks you a little bit. So leaving an impressive scar, but not much else. Oh no. Um, it'll be gone by morning. Don't worry. Yeah. Uh, Only a scratch. Continue down the hallway. The panther is kind of taking up the floor floorway. It's sleeping there now, but um, I'm going to try to sneak around it. Like, <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll, I'll allow you to make a stealth roll to sort of gingerly step around this sleeping cat. Uh, make it with advantage because it's asleep. Perfect. Stealth. So what I'm good at. Oh, double threes. 
Fuck. Still a 14. Still yeah, a 14. Double threes. Yeah, it's, it's asleep. Um, that was impressively low. Uh, not as good as my double ones I rolled an advantage roll last uh, last night. Um, <laughs> but you are able to kind of gingerly move around. There's a moment where it kind of twitches, as cats do sometimes when they're sleeping. And it kind of stretches out a paw, you know, and just about hits you, but doesn't it quite. Goes, and then, then he kind of uh, crawls, uh, crawls back up again. You step on beyond it. So you can put yourself on the other side of it. The uh, the the raven that you were that you saw before has actually stopped now that it sees motion coming towards it. Um, is Medric following suit in any way? Yeah, the Griffin's. Uh, I see the Griffin hasn't left too much of a mark on Annie, so I'll mm-hmm. follow Annie. Okay. And because you're kind of following quickly behind, it's still recoiling from trying to attack her. It does take a swing, but it's nowhere near you. Okay. Um, and then you see the, now for the, the cat. The cat. How agile am I feeling right now? It's a good question. The raven has stopped, kind of lands down on its feet and kind of turns and steps awkwardly and looks up at Andy. I'll stay on this side of the cat until, unless like things happen with the raven and Annie. Okay. The raven uh, sort of looks at you with head cocked. I'm going to say to the raven, I feel stupid doing this. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, and he's thinking, like, I, I feel stupid doing this, but I'm going to talk to the raven. Okay. Um, and say, I'm sorry we got off the, uh, on the wrong foot, but we're, we're trying to help. And I'll reach my hand out to see if it jumps on. Okay. All right. Um, it kind of cocks its head at you, kind of curious, and then looks at your hand. And then again, the kind of sort of that, that same sort of, th- it's one of those things with birds. If you ever notice a bird, it can cock its head and then somehow cock its head again. And you keep thinking like, how far around is this thing going to go? Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, but then it kind of pushes off with its wings and lands in your hand. Um, kind of is still regarding you with a tremendous amount of intelligence. A lot of intelligence, as in it knows uh, from looking at you a lot. I figured as much. Um, That's what I was hoping for. Um, From behind you, uh, uh, Medric, you hear the griffin move down the hallway. Nothing holding it back. I'm going to jump over the cat. Okay. Huh. I saw like how Annie steps, and I'm trying to copy the same steps. Sure. Okay. Uh, let's make this a um, an acrobatics or athletics check. Athletics. <laughs> I'll say with advantage because you're kind of stepping the same places that uh, Annie seemed to step. First one is a 24. Second, hey, second one's go. a 26. So, yeah, you managed to kind of uh, step in the same spaces, kind of off to one side. You knew it could stretch, so you go a little further. And, yeah, you managed to step around the thing. So the griffin's going to bother the cat, and the cat's going to scratch the griffin. I mean, that is literally what happens next, is the, the griffin, uh, <laughs> the first thing in front, uh, literally takes a swipe at the uh, sleeping cat. <laughs> no. uh, it's quite easily, because uh, it's, it's uh, unconscious. Uh, and the cat, um, in that way that only cats can manage, goes from sleeping blob to attack mode within seconds. And then it's back up, and it's fighting. Um, I have to find their stats, because I forgot about that. Uh, uh, uh. And it swipes, leaving almost a, 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 uh, a, a afterglow, if you will, of shadow. Uh, as it swipes strongly. Oh, but it manages to miss. Um, so, but you can see that it's got full strength and is very intent on damaging. Its claws don't seem to be nearly as sharp, or as short, I should say. But now they are engaged in a fight. All right, uh, let's get out of here before it notices us. Um, you do notice a door just beside you as well. I'll just mention that. All right, uh, let's... I'm going to try that door. Um, the door is... Let's see, that should be the door. Um, it is unlocked. So Perfect. Let me see if I can remove that. 
Uh, let's hope I don't remove all of the friggin' lighting again, because I've done that before. Uh, it's actually, yeah, okay, I almost did. Uh, it's up here a little bit, it's right by where the raven is. So I will just move ah. out of the way. And you see on the inside of the door, uh, actually, do you see anybody there? Uh, let me move an eye there. <laughs> Well, my, my token comes face to face with Baron. Um, oh, object layer. Let's move an eyeball in there. Can we take a break uh, for as, one? Yes. You, uh, do you need a, a washroom break? Okay, we'll just introduce the scene and we'll take a five minutes. Um, Sounds good. As you step in and see, uh, yes, the Baron there. Uh, the Baron looks to be furious and is currently uh, uh, staring across the table where you see that horned shadow also standing uh, kind of there. Both of them seem to be immobile at the moment. Beside the Baron, um, with a head of uh, a kind of large bulbous head that's furry, large uh, teeth, flat teeth, uh, on the front, and with a, a, a large a black uh, uh, fluffy tail out behind him, um, you see uh, uh, biting away at the Baron, who is currently immobile. Uh, from this distance, you actually recognize Aknarada, who was wearing the black squirrel mask, and is now gnawing away at the Baron's arm. Yeesh. Um but the, uh, actually, sorry, you would have seen that the horn shadow appears to be unconscious, but standing still. So it's, there's, there's no sense of, of the little pinpricks of, of light where the eyes had been before. Uh, and the Baron is, seems to be uh, immobilized. And what we'll do is we'll take a quick five minute break. Uh, I will uh, stop the stream. We'll come back uh, after that. All right. All right. Perfect. BRB. And there we are once more, refreshed, and maybe a little less perplexed. I don't know. <laughs> no, just as perplexed. <laughs> uh, as you have revealed uh, and entered into this, what I've labeled conveniently as sitting room, at least that's what was described as before, but now it clearly looks more like some sort of meeting room, a large table in the center of the room, numerous chairs scattered about. In each of the four corners, you can see a large ornamental statue. Looks almost like a figure on guard. Now, as with most things here, looking a combination of very ancient and uh, just half destroyed and also wrapped up in vines and moss. On the far side of the room, that strange shadowy figure seems suspended, un unaware and unawake. It's also, as you might notice, uh, as you notice a little bit, but maybe before, it does not touch the ground. It does seem to be something of a specter hanging in midair, but immobile. And right in front of you, in front of the door, is in fact the immobile form of the Baron himself, um, looking a kind of a kind of furious, like a permanent uh, fixture of anger is on his face. But he does seem to be, uh, uh, at first glance, looks like he's a, 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 a just squinting, but in fact seems to be unaware, being gnawed at by his chamberlain. And that's the thing you discover as you enter into that room. Okay. Um. Well. I'm going to try to push the Baron over to the side so that we can get in. Okay. Uh, that'll be a strength roll. Athletics, if you have it. He's a pretty big guy. I'll help her. Okay, with advantage. Let's see how much I fail. Oh, 16. Decent. He's not resisting. Um, it's just that he's such a big, bulky guy. And as you as you both kind of push him out of the way, you realize that he's wearing very soft, very beautiful clothing, like an, a wonderful uh, uh, double-breasted suit and uh, kind of plush uh, lining and all this. Underneath that suit is like pure muscle. 
and it's straining at the moment. But you're able to kind of push him out of the way uh, and enter into the room. I'll just say that the the uh, the raven flies in with you. Does the chamberlain uh, stay attached to his arm? Nope. You're able to rest him out of it, although the chamberlain is now looking for the next meal, apparently. Um, the coat is somewhat disturbed, but the rest of the the the, the actual uh, baron doesn't look all that bothered by having been gnawed on. How did that go? It doesn't look nearly as as upset as you would think a person on fire would be, as we said from the last campaign. <laughs> um, um, when we were pushing him, did did he step at all, or was it just like literally us pushing him out of the way? Literally like, pushing him out of the way, kid. like a statue. So, uh, you're both helping at the time, so to make this fair, I'll roll a d2. Uh, on a 1, it goes to Medric. On a 2, it goes to Annie. On a 2, Akinrata decides to attack Annie by attempting to gnaw at you. Does a 12 gnaw at you? It does not. Okay, you're able to kind of just sort of nudge the right way, and the, the, the jaw kind of goes clapping shut. Uh, with the, the nasty kind of sort of sound. And you can see, you can recognize Akinrata, but his face is so distorted and rounded and, and the jowl is much more extended to fit these massive teeth on the front with large eyes as well. Uh, but you're able to move into the room easily enough. Although Akinrata is not going anywhere, so you have to deal with that. Oh, he might be going somewhere because uh, when once Annie moves into the room, I'll grab a hold of Akinrata and, like, shove him out of the room and try to close the door behind him. Okay, make a grapple attack. So that would be athletics or acrobatics. Athletics. And he'll try to resist. 21. Oh, I don't think that's going to make a difference. Minus two. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Akinrata is not a tough Slam person. Slam the door. And you're Shut able door, to, to, to shove Akinrata out the door. I'm presuming Andy comes in. Uh, and then he, and he can deal line. with the cat outside. Yeah. Um, Bye. Also, um, just so that y'all know, um, there's apparently a tornado warning. What? For our area. Just there so that you know. There was a thunderstorm warning earlier, so I guess that... It, it's now a tornado warning. So there may be okay. another reason to end the game early tonight. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Brody pointed that out during during the break, so... Hmm. The weather well, that's warning. new. Yeah, I think I got like five other people going, hey, you know, there's a tornado warning. All right, well. <laughs> Good to know. We'll just live in our weird game world for a while and, and then. Yeah, you know, it's less depressing in the game world. Wait, no, it's more depressing right now, but. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's mildly weirder. So, yes, you close the door behind and you find that the door can actually lock if you want to lock it. All right. Um, it. Are, are we able to unlock it from the inside? Yep, it's it's, it's like one it's meant a... to be locked from the inside. Perfect. I, I will and unlocked. bar the door. Okay. Um, and I'm going to like shake the Baron's arm, like wake up. <laughs> okay. Doesn't seem See to have if that no works. effect. No. And no. he's he's his muscles are all tense, so shaking him, it's like practically trying to move the entirety of him at the same time. It's, it's almost like, no <laughs> different than trying to to shove him around. <laughs> Okay. Can I do a medicine check on him? Can I see like what's affecting him? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Just five. Eleven. Um, he does seem to be breathing. You actually do get a pulse as well. It's slow. Um, there doesn't seem to be any obvious wounds. Uh, you don't see that weapon he was wielding either earlier. Uh, it just feels like all of his muscles are, are stiffened up at once. It could be a poison at that point, or it could be something magically induced. It's really hard to tell. Um, and that's all you'll note from a from a, a medicine check. Yeah. Kind of the external mundane medicine. If you guys want a moment to think about it, we can pop back into the other room. Yes, because... Yeah, I'm just debating, like, 
lesser restoration. I have one level five spell slot left, but I want to use that for radio for myself later if I need to. So, uh, there's a lot going on here. So, if you have power, maybe you have to be a little cautious about spending it. But yeah, yeah, that's what, what it, I would. If he's if he's not moving, he's not going anywhere. He's not causing more problems. But he could fight on he could fight on our side too, though. Fair. The uh, raven flies up onto the shoulder of the Baron, and how about both of you make an animal handling roll? It's not really a handling roll; it's basically the insight for animals. <clears throat> 21. Good. Annie's just kind of like, it's a bird. It did this before. It was flying on his shoulder before. So I guess it's just doing it again out of instinct. Um, for you, uh, uh, Medrick, you're actually getting a little bit of a, uh, of a vibe almost of back off. Like you were looking over the Baron pretty closely and the, the bird almost seems to be not so much protective so much as Leave him alone. Well, you can Do I see the intelligence alone. in the bird? Absolutely, yes. Actually, you would note it now that the bird is very intelligent. And, and while you kind of took it at the animal level, um, it's acting far beyond an animal intelligence at this point. It seems to comprehend the situation, at least, or somehow understand okay. something that's going on. I'll ask it. How can I help? Can you hear me? And it kind of cocks its head. Um, it looks around the room and kind of looks at the, the, the shadow form for a second and then kind of shakes his head. Um, and then kind of looks towards the door. And you kind of interpret that as something out there. Nothing in this room is going to help. Or at least that's the, the vague impression you get. All right. It's like the bird wants us to go fetch something outside this room i'll put my ear to the door <laughs> is there still fighting and cat noises in the yes. hall or? yes okay. in fact you can hear now the loud hissing of the cat the growl of the griffin i don't know what squirrels make for sounds chittering i guess uh, as it also seems to be attacking uh, and you can you can hear this sort of vicious fight going on outside a three-way battle You're right outside the door or like further down down the hallway okay uh, right, and yeah, uh, the cat and everybody else is, is distracted. So if we want to go fetch whichever, whatever the bird wants us to get, now's the time. Um, do any are, are these suits of armor or are they statues? Um, they look to be uh, statues. Damn it! Okay. Damn it! <laughs> okay, um, I'm going to arm myself with a chair. Okay, the chairs in here are pretty heavy. They're like fancy uh, hardwood chairs. Um, so you kind of reach around and, and one of the chairs is too heavy. You pick up the next one. It falls apart kind of with decay and rot. Uh, you oh, end up man. with a sturdy piece of wood. I'm, I'm, I'm content with that. So treat it as a club. Uh, the, if you have a proficiency in club, then perfect. The table to the south. Is there anything on there that can be used as a weapon? Um, looks I'm like, more, I'm more trying to fence things off with the chair. That was my that's intent. Fair. That's fair. <laughs> The, the normal, the full chair would be too heavy for you to kind of drag around, but at least this can use a yeah. sort of baseball bat slash club slash stay the way, away, stay away from me. Um, you look at that table and uh, it looks as though there were bottles of wine on that at one point, but now all you find are, is broken glass and uh, dark stains where whatever okay. wine had been there either had been broken or consumed or maybe judging from some of the vines, it was drinking the wine. It's hard to tell. Wow. Talk about watering your plants. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I'll grab a, another chair leg from the chair that Annie tore apart. Okay. So I'll get it. I'll have a club too. So you have a club as well. That's right. And uh, can I grab the back of the chair, like the entire back, and use that as a buckler or a shield or something? <laughs> uh, <laughs> it would be. I mean, it would be hard to use as a shield unless you can figure out a way to strap it to your arm. Yeah, uh, crap. Because there's no there's no real grab onto it. It's like solid. Right. Back. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll use uh, some of the broken glass to tear apart the cushioning on the chair. 
Okay. I just like tear one hole on each side and put my arm through it. Okay. Sure. Why not? That sounds fun. <laughs> so Creativity. You now have a chair shield. It's not very strong, yeah. so every time it, it, you you uh, get hit, there's a and but it doesn't hit you. There's a chance that it will take the damage instead. So uh, we'll give okay. it a, a hardness rating of six. So How much AC does it give me? Uh, it gives you plus two AC. Awesome. So my AC is twelve now. Uh, but every time, every time it's swung and hits you, then we'll roll to see if it hits the shield. If it hits okay. the shield, the shield takes the damage. So six points of damage, and then it's destroyed because it's okay. a chair. <laughs> <laughs> um, and conveniently, I am actually uh, proficient. It in is chair. a simple weapon. I am proficient in in club. <laughs> All right. So while the two of you are destroying the furniture and finding appropriate clubs, uh, let's head back out to the main room. Does uh, Silas have additional barbs to uh, to exchange with um, this this person? Hmm. So if you can if you convince the Baroness, well, if you convince how she was at scale. Uh, what was the name she used? Scale Croker. Scale Croker. Oh, yeah. So that was what I was going to ask next. Uh, is Scale Croker a hag, or is Scale Croker what you intend to turn her into? I tire of your questions. Scale Croker is her name. That is all. Now, if you don't want to make a deal, maybe to help me in exchange for a little bit of extra planar travel, I suggest you find some other place to be. This will be very unpleasant. What would you need me to do? Hmm. Perhaps you could feed my servants. I'll just stay out of the way. For now. If you want the larger deal, work out it. I will work out a larger payment, of course. I'm definitely interested. Good. I will but find I you. To... Sorry? I will find you then. When we are done with this present business. No, let's see. Silas is pretty sure that he can't get in there to the Baroness anyways without probably killing himself. Um, he'll just walk out past her back to where uh, he saw the others go. Okay. Make a perception check then. Cat noises. Meow. <laughs> so my cat just like looked up when I made that noise. <laughs> um, Eleven. Where did you go? Oh, you went to the bottom. Okay. Um, yeah. As you leave the door, you feel kind of that weird, uh, that sense there was a wall there before. You feel that forming a little bit behind you. And you hear the little creature whispering. It kind of moves closer and whispers up to the to the, the yellow lace, um, but you don't quite catch what, uh, what they say. And then they uh, vanish from sight. Hmm. Um, Silas reaches back towards the doorway just to feel, see if we can feel that there's an energy barrier there now or what? Yeah. It feels like okay. pushing your hand into water or soft mud now. And you think they would take force to actually move through it. Maybe it's just for you, though. You're not sure. Mm. Well, he'll uh, take out his book and say, uh, yeah, no luck on this end. Where are you guys? The Baron and the Shadow are uh, statues. And we've 
broken a chair to to make weapons. We're we're following directions from a bird. Yes. And there's a big fight in the hallway, so you might want to steer clear of that. To say it. <laughs> I've got the I've got the bag here. Yes, but we can't see you. What makes you think we can see the stuff in the bag? Well, if I can find you guys, I could try dropping the bag near you. Okay. All right, mind the cat. I don't know which way you guys went. <laughs> Uh, exiting the room, we went to my left. My right, my right. <laughs> we were on the side right. of the room with the crow. Gotcha. Kill. We're, we're in the side room. Oh, hello, Griffin. <laughs> so, yes, you see uh, a three-way battle going on. And one of those large black cats caught in the middle the griffin or a griffin person on one side and a strangely large headed squirrel on the other. Uh, the two uh, seem to be ganging up on the, the, the uh, cat like thing in the middle, but it looks like the cat like thing is actually doing a lot of damage. As you can see the, the griffin uh, with large chunks uh, sort of cut out of his side, the feathers are starting to look uh, bloody and awful. And then it tur the cat turns around and swipes at the squirrel as well, um, putting a, a large chunk out of its leg. So unlike what you've seen of the people that are transformed, this thing seems to have either full faculty or full danger. Both. Or both. Mm. <laughs> uh, okay. I really don't have much more to do. Um, Silas is going to try and ease his way past them. <laughs> they are distracted. <laughs> they don't seem to be able to see him, so maybe... Oh, right. So, um, acrobatics in this case, to kind of move around them without running into them, because you remember running into the living creatures was much more painful and dangerous. Sixteen... You're able to, to move around them. Um, again, they don't see you. They're not reacting to you. Um, you kind of just take your time and move through. It still counts as difficult terrain, but essentially you, you move through without it causing any problems. Which you know normally you would have a hard time moving through a narrow hallway like that with people fighting. But at the moment, that's so Yeah. Um, so, yes. Um... The door is closed. Yeah, can you open the door? <laughs> yep. Yeah. I'll open the door. There's nothing there. Yeah. Silas will come in and untie the bag of holding from his belt. Okay. Uh, and set it on the table and then let go of it. Okay. It's sitting if there it's on the table. You can clearly see it. However, Annie and Medrick do not. Trap. Mm. Stylus is going to try and change his uh, illusion. Actually, he's going to try to cancel the illusion that he was under. Okay. Can you feel the magic, magic dissipate from you? Nothing else seems to change. Mm. You can make an arcana okay. check if you like. Yeah, uh, he'll He'll put up just a, another uh, servant illusion. That's not going to change anything. 24. Nice. It starts to occur to you that wherever this place is, it has layers, kind of like the normal plane does. The normal plane is where all things exist, usually called the material plane. But then there are other planes right next to it, near planes. Um such as mm. the, the uh, oh man, I forgot the name of it offhand. Uh, yeah, the ethereal the, plane. There, yeah. And you kind of start to realize, wait, I'm actually in the ethereal plane of this place. You're in the ah. shadow plane of this real plane, but unfortunately, unless you have a way to transverse that plane, you can't interact in the same way with a normal mortal plane or whatever this thing is. <laughs> And everything well, that came with you is also tied into that ethereal plane. Yeah. He'll uh, he'll 
uh, grab the bag back and tie it onto his belt and uh, say, well, um, we have a chair. <laughs> yeah, I'm not invisible, but I do seem to be on the ethereal plane, so I can't give anything to you. Damn it. Um, but you can scout for us, right? Yeah, that shouldn't be hard. Uh, what's to the north of this? Like, what's like if we exit the door? What's on the left at the end of the left hallway? I think it's just, just the, end. it's the end of the hallway. Oh, there are there are uh, plants there. Okay. You know, you would have noticed those in the way in. It wasn't really a big detail. Okay. Similar to the bush you saw before, it just happens to be one of the end of the hallway. Well, um, well, the bird wants us to get something. I don't know what it is. The bird sees. Silas, at least it's looking at a place where nothing is standing right now. And Silas, you notice it looking directly at you, so it can see you. I'm gonna say, Hello, Raven. Are you looking for something? And it kind of stamps its feet as if somewhat impatient and flies out the open door. All right, let's follow it. Let's Mind follow the cat. The bird. Um, you might want to grab back Narada and chuck him in the room because he's going to get killed in a minute. But then our distraction's gone. Are you willing to let someone die for a distraction? Well, if the cat gets after me, I'm going to die. So, Do you have a way to, sub to magically subdue the cat? Unless I have an idea. I'll grab, is there like a loose stone or something? Or I'll grab a piece of broken chair. Okay. I'll cast light on it. All right. And it's like a small piece, right? And it's like bright, kind of like a laser. And I was like, kitty, kitty. And I'll toss it down the hall. <laughs> uh, well, we'll probably have to get rid of its targets before we do that. Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> it is surrounded right now. So it, it, it would have a hard time kind of chasing after something, especially if it's surrounded and in danger. Being attacked yeah, from two sides. Let's try to remove Aknarada from the cat. Yeah, and Griffin do it afterwards. Okay. So how do so, you want to uh, approach this? Silas, you might want to go to the other side of the cat and try to get the Griffin to disengage. Whereas we'll grab Aknarada and toss him back in the room and hope and hope he doesn't eat the Baron. Okay. The uh, <laughs> the uh, uh, Raven has flown and kind of deftly avoided all of them by being higher than them in the in the hallway and kind of lands at the far end of the uh, of the hallway, looking back, waiting. Um, Silas, you just made your way through them again. Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to make you roll for it. You kind of already were able to figure out a route through them, and they're very intent on what's going on there in front of them. So, um, I'm going to suggest that me and Medrek, one, two, three, grab Yank. And okay. shut the door. Boom. All right. Uh, sounds sounds neat. Uh, I'll, I'll, you know, it's a little a little crowded, but I think that's that's kind of a cool idea. So one of you take lead, and the other one provides uh, uh, help. I, I will let Medrek, who is much stronger than I, Okay. So it's a grapple acnorata. It's a grapple attack. So acrobatics or athletics, probably athletics. Ac oh, actually, yeah. what what I can do is I can use my mastermind uh, abilities to like explain what to do, my, or my master of tactics. Right. Ex explain explain what to do in order to give him advantage, so I'm not in the way. Nice. Okay. So and probably, I'll pass Annie the lit up object so she can toss it. In so I'm imagining that Annie kind of backs up into the hallway a little bit. Jeez. Let's Medric come out. Okay, so right. 23 with advantage. Which yeah, is no problem. He, he, he can't even roll that high. So, yeah, no problem <laughs> grabbing a hold of him as the as the uh, as it's he's moved or he's grabbed. You can easily move him. He's not that heavy. Uh, maybe a little heavier than normal, but that's mostly teeth. Uh, and I'll, I'll send the director to, to throw him in, in the room and I'll slam the door shut. Okay. Easily enough done. You can drag him in. Slam the door shut once more. And now just the two of them are going hammer and tongs. The Griffin versus Panther. Uh, 
Silas is going to try using command out of the staff. Hmm. Okay. Uh, he's going to back down this hallway a bit, peek out, and uh, command it to flee. Command what? The griffin. Okay. What's the save on that? Uh, there we go. Uh, Command. It's probably wisdom or charisma, but I'm pretty sure it's wisdom. Uh, no, it's from the staff. So, uh, da -da -da. oh, actually, he'll, he can hit up to three targets within thirty feet of each other. So he'll hit the panther as well. Okay. Uh, both is a wisdom save. All right. You feel the magic let loose. You do feel that it, it's almost like it has to travel further and may not have as strong an effect as you had hoped. Um, first for the griffin, it's a 10. No problem there. And for the other one. Save, I think. For, yeah, I think it's... 16 50. for the panther. Okay, I think that's a... Uh, yeah, it's only a 15. Okay. So the griffin, indeed, uh, takes off running. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Which direction are they going to run? Well, let's roll a d2 as they get to the uh, centerpiece where the, where the raven is kind of turning back and forth. So they'll go right after that point, running right through where, uh, where uh, Silas is. Oh. oh, that's left. Um, sorry. It was right from my perspective because there's, okay. there's yeah. down and yeah. the right. I also so, try and duck. Um, yep, make a, an acrobatics uh, check. Or actually, dex save. Same thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's not trying to aim for you, so you really just have to flatten yourself up against the wall. Uh, and then goes fleeing. And you see him turn. Uh, let's see. Still in fleeing mode. Uh, be a D3. Up, right, or uh, left. Tries to go up. You see the you see him bounce off of the empty door frame twice, <laughs> three times. <laughs> there we go. Uh, before charging through, and uh, let's see if seashells can get out of the way. Uh, man, yeah, seashells manage just to sidestep just in time as the griffin goes barreling down and then out of sight. The panther, however, uh, no longer has a target, but does sense someone nearby uh, and turns towards Medric. Did I that would any? be a good time for your, yeah. for your, your distraction. I'll hold it out in front of the cat. It's like, look, and toss it down the hallway. They've been acting very cat-like. I will give you an animal animal handling check with advantage because it is very cat-like. Nice. It was in the middle of a battle, but maybe it's sensing that the battle's over. And twelve and chase. three. Okay, is it is it twelve and a half? <laughs> okay. Uh, well, the three definitely isn't, but that's why it's advantage. Let's see if it has a. Uh, let's see. I will give it a wisdom check. No, it utterly fails the wisdom check. Uh, and in fact, goes yeast chasing light. Out, you're just yeeting it down the hallway. Yeah. All right. The cat's going to like barrel into Maximus. But <laughs> uh, pretty it's much playtime. at full speed. <laughs> Let's see Cat if tackle. Maximus can get out of the way. Um, <laughs> Maximus oh, oh, yeah. easily sidesteps out of the way as the cat goes barreling down the hall, chasing after the thing. And uh, scurry, 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 scurry. And zoomies stop somewhere down the hallway, and you hear it growling, and you hear a a, a, a deeper growl. Uh, actually, it sounds more like a whinny. Oh. oh no! Crap! Did it run into a wall? Did it run into the horse? The person who was yeah. dressed up as a horse. Um. 
The Winnie is weirdly musical. Let's put it that way. Uh, the crow, however, or the raven, however, is going to resume its flying. Flying over Silas and uh, Medrick's head towards the fall, far hallway. The same direction the, the, the griffin just ran, by the way. Great. Mm. Is Andy catching up? Oh, there she is. Uh, follow the bird. I'm going to see if the horse is someone that needs saving. Okay. I'll be back as fast as I can. And Silas is just going to dash. Okay. Which way is Silas dashing? So right by Maximus? Uh, down at, yeah. W- right where the direction the panther went to. Okay. You do notice that right by Maximus is another one of these sleeping panthers on the ground. Okay. Uh, you'll avoid the sleeping panther. Uh, and the bird uh, raven flies over and leads you into the uh, into the dining room. As you whip on down, you also notice another panther sleeping in there. You see yeah. a familiar face in uh, looking a lot. Uh, actually, let's see. Um, kind of uh, oaken face with large vertical wrinkles and a uh, an expanse of what looks like a combination of hair but with some sort of wood expanding up over their head and they don't seem to notice you at that moment uh, make a perception check though as well fifteen okay uh, as you notice in that side room uh, who are you? Um, sort of sitting in that corner, you notice a large uh, figure um, sitting on the table. Uh, they look like their their uh, skin is pockmarked and torn open. You can see muscle through them. Uh, the skin is kind of brownish gray. And they're kind of just uh, sitting there looking around. Um, and you remember that where they're sitting is where that small table was, where you had found yeah. uh, and thrown that thing that, it, that ignited into a, a puff of spores in the room. But there is a tree-like person who's standing right there and kind of um, whirling around a little bit as if looking for something. And you can see their arms are large branch-like things with, with uh, uh, smaller branches where the fingers would be ready to scratch out at something. When I Little. saw M- Melora earlier, what kind of mask was she wearing? Uh, she was dressed as a great tree Okay. with autumn leaves. She seems so safe at the moment. Looks like she's um, looking around for something to attack, but nothing is, is striking her right now at the moment. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Uh, as you move down, um, you see kind of, as you get closer, you actually make out a bit, a bit of light. Again, you're seeing the world in this sort of shadow. Uh, and standing in front of you with uh, uh, a horse's head, pure white, silvery long mane down behind, uh, large uh, glowing horn on the forehead, uh, and with uh, strong muscles uh, uh, whinnying and fighting back against this panther with a lot of strength, uh, make an, uh, let's call it an insight check. You can make it with advantage. Yeah. Natural 20. Judging from hey. the clothes and from the, uh, the form of the head, uh, you realize mm. it looks like a unicorn. And you remember that Verendel's mask was, in fact, a unicorn mask. Yep. He seems to be doing Oops. okay against this thing, though. Unlike most of the rest, whatever it happens to be, he's holding his own. And that Cat's musical whinny is almost, <laughs> it's almost magical in, in a way. Um, maybe he's taken on more of the unicorn traits? Who knows? Okay, if he doesn't... Well, it's still a panther that's attacking him. Um, I take a swing at the panther with my staff. Okay, it's a make magic a, staff. Maybe make it a hit. Uh, sixteen to hit. No extra magic damage. Okay, so the total is actually six. no. I will. I will charge it up and hit. So it's a magic. Uh, 
no booming blade, no hex. Uh, so yeah, so it's mag- it's magical blunt damage. Okay. Uh, it does Six. seem to have an effect. It does not seem to have as much effect as you thought it would. Mm. Okay. Um. Yeah, I will just stay there for the moment. Uh, I think I'm out of movement and everything anyways. So. Okay. Um, as the two of you, Medric and Annie, swing back into that room where you had seen that strange creature before, I believe. Um, yes. You see this, this monkey-like creature, once again, kind of taking the a, a bunch of things that's found around the room and... Uh, uh, it seems to be putting them in piles and then sorting the piles according to what it looks for. Uh, and the, the crow kind of flies in and lands, uh, or sorry, the raven, I keep calling the crow, lands on the chair and starts sort of uh, cawing at it. It seems to take a little bit of interest in them. Uh, meanwhile, in the corner, uh, the gull and the squid are fighting quite menacingly. The squid kind of has a half a hold on the gull and is proceeding to sort of pummel him a little bit him or her her i think uh whereas the wooden goose wooden goose actually would have run out by now uh, actually sorry no the wooden goose is laughing as is the gull uh so the gull is not fighting back okay so uh the monkey is in red yes yeah i just used generic icons for them we had yeah, no time no to, worries. to find them they stand so does the crow want us to like uh i'm trying i'm gonna try to like figure out what do you want to the crow like it's just sort of looking at you, Raven, uh, looking at you and looking at it, as in this is you now. I'll I'm yell at the monkey. Feet a little bit impatiently. Hey, can you talk? It kind of turns its head. Uh, why are you speaking? Nobody's speaking. Well, I, I am speaking. I just spoke to you, but you answered my question because you just talked. Uh, can you understand the, the raven? He kind of looks over at it. Doesn't say anything. Doesn't speak like you. Uh, why are you putting all these objects in a pile? I'm not judging. I'm just out of pure curiosity. Pretty things. I like pretty things. Promised many pretty things. Can this I look one, at them? He picks up one thing. No good. Tosses it. Kind of hits you with it. Doesn't take any damage. Just this little... It's basically a bottle cap or a, or okay. a, <laughs> a top off of a, of a wine bottle. This one holds up a uh, what something that glitters. And you kind of recognize it. Um, there are in some of the uh, uh, statues and things around, there are little gems. It looks like it's mm-hmm. pried out one of the gems. This one. Good. Power for me. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Uh, do you mind if we look at your stuff? Mine? We're not going to take anything. No. Unless you have trade. You give me soul? It smiles, this awful, ugly grin. Uh, not soul, no. Small but, one, uh, good, fine. Small one of cat. Small one of baby. Small one of small person. But big one better. And it I'm kind of going lurches to look a little bit towards you, towards the end of the table. And mm-hmm. you see that its leg seems to be bound a little bit, as it doesn't get very far from the location. Ah. Are, are you are you chained there? Dirty, dirty bound, dirty bound. What if, in exchange for looking at your stuff, we uh, get you unbound? And I'll look at any. Can you do that? I I shoot daggers at him i'm like you're not releasing this thing you're not thinking of that are you like, like just like like actual daggers with backstab and everything hmm? yeah yeah um, just like no mine can't shirk duty unless you have something more what's your duty here hold keep door open I'll keep the door open, I guess. You get the impression it was actually explaining its duty. Oh, okay. 
network has an end of minus one. So yeah. I said duty. <laughs> Um, I will have, um, hmm. let's call this an investigation check. Annie gets advantage. And I'll tell you why in a moment. It's not really investigation, but what the hell? It's never a right skill when you need one. Minus one. And, oh, that's, wow. That's a natural two for a one. Wow. Okay. Uh, yeah, you're still wondering why he wants you to hold the door open. And then it's like, wait, no, that doesn't make any sense. Um, Annie, you're, you're looking at this strange creature and insisting that you do not, you know, whatever Medrick was suggesting. Uh, and you notice this, this, uh, uh, let's see, what does he have? I think it's a silverish chain that's around one ankle and it runs and snakes under the table for 12. That's all I can give you. <laughs> and I noticed that Nanny, uh, that uh, that uh, Annie cleared daggers into me, so I'm just going to drop the issue of uh, releasing him. But I'll pretend like it's still an option that's on the table. It's like, uh, do you mind if I have a look at that shackle? No. All right. Duty. So I'll look. Yeah, dude. Duty is good. You're doing a great job. Ah. It smiles again, this sort of hideous smile. I get a job. Uh, I'm going to uh, lean down and take a closer look at the shackle. Okay. Yeah, I'll do the same too. And I'll cast guidance on Annie. <laughs> okay. Um, well, the guidance uh, may not be necessary because it's not a role in this case, uh, but okay. for taking a look underneath, the thing that Andy realizes right away is the point at which the shackle contacts the underside of the table, you see now glowing an abyssal symbol. Uh, in fact, you find it repugnant to look at. Uh, you feel like staring at it for too long. It's like you're staring into the abyss. Um, but the thing you realize is that point is the same point in which that bag was underneath the table before the one that exploded and left behind a brief symbol so his chain is directly connected to where the center of that symbol was or is i should say now and he's holding a door open i don't magic <laughs> but this is where I really, I don't. She, she, she has no interest in magic. But the, that's exactly where the pouch was. Wait, so maybe wherever there are pouches, there's some of these creatures. I'll look at the bird. It so seems he kind can, of like, bored with you. More deny. And crawls hmm? to the other end of the table and starts picking at the gull's things. The gull is laughing helplessly. The squid is kind of attacking it, and it's kind of reaching out with long arms and just sort of plucking off the ornaments off of the gull's uh, sort of jacket uh, as if to kind of like, hmm. Like All right. While he's distracted, I'll ask, I'll whisper to the, the raven, it's like, okay, he's distracted. Just grab whichever object we need and run. Uh, it, it, it looks uh, at the stuff on the table. And looks back at you, and there's this tilt of the head as in, what the hell are you thinking? Does not seem to agree with your plan. We have to kill this thing? Could it... If a bird could shrug. Could it be by holding the door open? It means literally, like, part of the circle, like, severing it from the symbol? Would close the door. It's finished kind of picking things off of the, uh, of the gull and kind of bring the crow to a pile of, of, uh, of shinies and then starts going through them, throwing one across its, uh, off its shoulder going. Eh. Does, no, no. does the crow react to, to what I said at all? Um, Yes. I mean, the, the crow has a limited vocabulary in this situation. Um, and actually, again, if a crow could shrug, it tries to shrug and then flies over onto the table 
and swoops down to try to pick up one of the small things that it's set aside as, as, as shiny. Um, it immediately reacts and backhands the crow. Uh, let's see here. That guy. Bring up his sheet here. Let's see how badly he'll do this. Eh, it could happen. Oh, yeah. Going out. Happens. So backhands the crow, which kind of uh, flies actually almost at you, Annie, as it gets backhanded. Uh, Manage to kind of bounce off the wall instead uh, and then shrug. And then the creature uh, kind of growls, No! I promise shrinies. I get shinies. I get precious. My job. What I want. What do you think, Annie? Just do it in? Kind of shakes it, stands back up, shakes its head as if to clear its thoughts. And then kind of looks up at Annie. And then over at the creature, and you get the impression, Andy, that it's trying to help you, but it has such a limited vocabulary, as in no words at all. Uh, nod for yes, shake your head from side to side for no. Do we kill this guy? There's kind of a bobbing of the head as an uncertainty. Um, Come on, what do you want from me? <laughs> what did the crow, like, when it went to get or when the raven went to get something off the table did it actually touch anything uh it did but it didn't actually try to grab anything it sort of was uh, making a feint to grab something and it specifically targeted the pile that the creature had set aside as in these are shiny these are what i want as opposed to the ones it was throwing away or the pile it hadn't sorted yet <sighs> okay so we we grabbed the shiny pile Nod for yes. Kind of vigorously shakes its head no. <laughs> okay, is there like sand anywhere in this mansion where we can just get the crow to write out instructions? <laughs> <laughs> is there a chalkboard nearby? I need to... <laughs> oh god, no, because that'd be like, screech, screech, screech! <laughs> <laughs> um. The crow... Uh, my my brain is just and, and flies out through the door and down the hallway. Wait, wait, should we? God damn it! Let's follow it. Yeah. Which hallway? Uh, just down the hallway where you had been. Uh, and let's see. Ah, okay, perfect. Uh, it flies around the corner, so just out of sight for the moment. And you can hear it cawing and pecking at something. As you Washer. once again hear the, the laughter and hear the the uh, the fighting going on. Uh, not much has really changed since you were last here. The salmon's skin is pockmarked with, uh, with little bruises where the swan has been basically trying to nip at it. Uh, the, um, uh, let's see. Uh, which one are you? Uh, the peacock is missing a few feathers, but otherwise just as laughing as continuously as before. But the being with the small jewels who's there and kind of picking away at the peacock now finds itself attacked by the raven as it seems to be trying to scratch at its face. Oh. Which gets its attention. So it's so pick up shinies. And this is the one that has small jewels for, for skin and eyes and face. Everything of it seems to be composed of small jewels. Which I small th jewels? think you but actually I recognize. But uh, I just asked you if you wanted me to pick up the shinies and you said no. Like, And I'm just feeling yes. really self-conscious because Annie's well, probably like, she's laughing at me because I'm arguing with the bird. So, yeah, you do recognize <laughs> that the, the, the jewel-encrusted mask was the one that, that Ardwin was wearing, wearing. So this is presumably Ardwin. Basically, I was trying to get an answer from Medric of, like, if he who actually knows magic agreed with my hypothesis. So I'm just lost. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> like, about... So, I thought it was a question to the DM. Shit. N no. <laughs> Sorry. Got a little confused no. there for a second. So so I was asking Medric 
basically, do you think that it, holding the door open has to do with the symbol? Because that's where the pouch was. Right. It could. So you if we make released him of his duty, the door would close. You can make an arcana check on that, uh, Medric, if you want. Or arcana, religion. Yeah, which I do not have. <laughs> you have religion. I would allow that as well. Okay, let's do religion, because arcana was a one. Which is zero, actually. <laughs> religion. It's like, wait, I, I don't know magic. What would Ignis do? <laughs> That's right. And he has the worst possible Ignis would person. would get a 20. Not, 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 not natural. But. Okay. I, I, I'm the worst possible person to be asked this question. I mean, with That's zero, why I'm asking I'm not, the I'm question. I'm not so sure. I think in the moment, Medrick demonstrated that magic, magic is a thing, I think. Um, but you kind of think back to some of your early lessons about, uh, about the planes of existence. And... One of the elements of the plane's existence is not only there are the major planes, there are small pocket planes that come to into existence. Um, the, the bag, actually, that you carry is a pocket plane. Uh, and those can be created by forces of will, magical energies, that sort of thing. Um, for something this big and this powerful, it would need to be maintained. And so if we're talking about a door, it's very possible that creature is maintaining part or all of this realm bound to it right so as like after i'm done like asking questions to the bird and getting no answers in the hallway and i'm like oh shit annie i, I think you're onto something <laughs> <laughs> so but i asked if oh, the, the bird ahead. says did not did you just shrugs if we kill the king but like, yeah, let's just go kill him. Do you have the energy to kill him? I don't. Uh, yeah, I, I, have I, I have a dagger and a club. I guess I have a dagger and a chair leg. Like. <laughs> Meanwhile, the bird is trying to scratch through, and the jewel encrusted person is trying to fight. Neither one is really equipped for this particular fight. The bird's too agile, and the gem encrusted person is covered in gems and hard to actually harm. But where is, what does he want with the gems? Uh. So now it's, just, it's figuring out how it's holding the door open. So you saw a symbol under the table. What if we just, like, I don't know, scratched it out? Or broke the table? I mean, I guess. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to roll with my plus one arcana to see if that makes sense. What would happen if I broke the table? Can I do, can I, can I do a religion check or is it an arcana check? Uh, there wouldn't be religion at that point. That would be straight up arcana. Um, like, I don't know. I mean, breaking 11? things often is a solution to this, but you have no idea if this is the solution in this case. I'll ask the bird, do you want me to break the table? It seems to be far too busy right now trying to peck away and scratch out some of these, these gems out of this person. Could it be wanting us to bribe it? Oh, uh, yeah, maybe. Hey, sorry, Ardwin. And I'll just go... Ah, oh, shit. I'll go between them. I'll go around because I don't want to go near the plant. Okay. So you're taking the long way around? Yes. Okay. The safe way. <laughs> um, you do and see I'll another just... one of those uh, those uh, panthers on the stairs as well, curled up and sleeping. Where I'm sleeping or no? Uh, I've lost track of you. So okay, so if I see it there, I'm not going to go there. I'm just going to go under the bird. Okay. Well, the bird will move out of the way to accommodate you. <laughs> I'll... Try to pluck a jewel from Ardman's face. Okay. How are you doing that? Just with straight up fingers or? You have a chair table or a chair leg, I guess. I don't know if that is what you want to try to yeah, do. Yeah, it's not really Give a suited jewel for that kind of work. <laughs> Knock them out. Melora will be mad at me. L like a, a pomegranate. Yeah, this is Melora's dad. So that might yeah. also complicate matters later on. I don't know. Annie, how should I do this? <laughs> 
You're the one with the agile hands. And agile. Tiger. Agile. I don't know how, how you pronounce that. I'll just try you to... Needed, uh, um, re- oh, there you go. Yeah. Grab um, a jewel and pull as hard as I can. Okay. Uh, make a, an unarmed attack. <laughs> so it's just straight up strength bonus. Okay. Unless you're trained and unarmed. I don't think you are. I am not. Um, 16. 16? Yeah. You easily grab onto one of them. Uh, now it's a matter of a strength check to see if you can dislodge, rip out, and everybody, tear up. Just to correct, everybody is proficient in unarmed attacks. Um, hmm. Because there's a particular feat that gives you that. And it gives you additional abilities on top of that. So, so uh, there's an item that makes your your uh, unarmed attack magical, and there's um, bonuses added to it. But everybody can punch. It it just does does your strength damage. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, it's one plus your strength for for damage. So, okay. Well, right. So you, with you the gem in hand, way, I'll- which is good. But thank you for the for the the clarification. Uh, you've got a handle on one of these jewels. All right, I'll grab, I'll hold the symbol of Ignis and cast guidance on myself. Okay. And yank as hard as All I right. can. Straight strength up roll. strength check. Make a strength roll. Eighteen plus four. So yeah. Twenty-two. No problem. You tear away a gem out of the soft flesh that you find. Actually, that you don't find underneath. You find more gems, in fact. But you now have a gem about the size of your. Probably about the size, a little smaller than the size of your palm that you've pulled out. And there's a, a nasty growl that happens, uh, that, that occurs from Ardwin. Um, let's see. My bad. How many hit points does he have? Okay, he's still standing, uh, but he is going to take a swing at you. Um, I don't think a 12 hits, actually, with your shield it, up. It does, because it's 12. All right, well, you take one point of slashing damage as he as he reacts uh, and kind of uh, scratches at you. Um, the raven, however, starts to circle in place and and uh, call uh, in what you could only think of as a celebration. So I did something right. All right, now where, where do I bring this? I'll ask the bird. Uh, it's going to fly uh, back down by, by Watch you. the vines. Uh, Here, give... Give it to me. I'll toss the gem to Annie. Here we go. Well, not toss, but like I'll just put it in your hand. <laughs> Here, catch. Whip. <laughs> oh, now we got to give another one. Bed it in her forehead. No. Um, <laughs> and it flies back and then flies into the room once again, flying to sit on that chair and calling. And it's a good size gem, eh? Yep, just a little smaller than the size of your palm, actually. So pretty, pretty good. It's it's a little bit weird though, as small little gems are falling off of it, almost like flesh or blood. Mm-hmm. And and just to confirm, it it's bigger than anything in his pile. Oh yeah, by far. Okay. He's still sorting things. He looks up when you come in. Oh. Do you want goes this? back to his sorting. I, I'm gonna say, hey. What do you think super, of this one? Super casual. Hey, how's it going? Kind of something. Weird. Um, it it kind of it kind of looks up and does a double take when it sees what you're holding. Ah ah ah! And kind of moves over to the edge of, uh, uh, of the uh, table, and then and the the, uh, the uh, uh, chain restrains it. Ah, shiny, shiny, precious. I like it. Ah, I want it. I want it. Mine, mine. If you close the door, I'll give it to you. Deal, deal. Give, give, give. <laughs> no, no prescription, no nothing. <laughs> I'll give it to him. All right. Wait, let him make sure he closes the door first. He he seems to be waiting for the gem. He's not doing anything else other than kind of reaching yeah. out me greedily for it. I'll, I'll give give the gem. Now close the door. Okay. As soon as it gets the gem, it kind of brings it to its chest and kind of looks at it very closely. Ah, payment, better, better payment. I like better payment. Yeah. <laughs> Goodbye. And doesn't say that to you. He raises his head and looks up kind of at the ceiling as if calling out the place and just sort of wrenches his leg and the the, the chain snaps. Everything shifts as if an earthquake goes off. Uh, The the small amount of light you saw from the the symbol underneath 
vanishes as it also seems to just sort of eat itself and vanish. And you hear from, uh, 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 how clever is he? Well, let's see how clever he is. Let's have him make a roll. Cause it's always kind of funny to see when they, they don't, aren't, they aren't clever and eh, not quite clever enough. Uh, as you hear from not very far away from you in the, uh, in the uh, uh, darkness, or not darkness, in the empty space. Um, there we go. Couldn't grab it very much. Uh, as you hear a, a uh, no, no, she won't be happy from over in the corner. And in doing so, you kind of end up revealing where the closet was standing in the corner, watching what was going on, and then runs out. Apparently he was sent to spy on you, but he didn't actually have an ability to break to stop you from doing anything. Fair enough. All right. So, uh, we should go to the locations where the other bags were. There's one in the library. And one in the bathroom. Meanwhile, right. on the other side, how is Silas dealing with, uh, Varendel and the fighting Panther, or is he going to investigate something else? Um, well, I assume by this point, it's, it's been a bit. So he's taken a couple more whacks of the panther to try to help Varendel. Okay. Go ahead and roll and then, a couple of attack rolls and, and, and draw some damage okay. if hit. Um, and he's going to sonic boom these ones. Okay. Still no hex, though. Uh, that definitely hits. Uh, uh, total to damage. Eight thunder and five bludgeonings. That's 13. Okay, that does seem to be effective. Uh, again, not quite as effective as you expected it to be. Yeah, and then a 13 to hit. Uh, that hits as well, actually. What's the total damage there? Uh, two thunder and ten magical bludgeoning. So that is... Uh, 12 total. Yeah. Uh, you see it's, it, it's form waver. Oops, I hit the wrong button. There you go. You see it's form waver and grow thin. Uh, almost as though the 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 shadow that was holding it together is shredding. It turns though to fight to face you now because it knows it's being attacked by apparently an invisible enemy. So it will take an attack in your direction at disadvantage because okay. it, it can't see anything. Uh, pfft, yeah, misses entirely. I don't even have to roll the other one. Uh, but it starts swiping out in your direction as if something is there, but it does not seem to notice it. And from behind, uh, where are we, buddy? Uh, you see, oh, actually, I just can roll this. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> nope, Varendel's not doing much better as he attempts to, uh, oh, wait, no, that'd be advantage, actually. Uh, that's significantly better. As Varendel gores it with the horn. And it, it kind of growls and then dissipates into shadow that sort of flows outward and seems to flow in multiple directions very quickly in a way. It seems okay. to be dissipated. Um, um, Varendel seems intent on finding something more. Well, Silas is going to just stay out of his way and write to the others. Um, found Varendel. Uh, he stalks forward right past you. Killed a panther. Varendel is okay, but on the attack. You guys doing any better? And you would have felt the whole shift as well, the sort of earthquake and the nature of it. Mm. For you, weirdly, one of the things it did is it sort of everything dimmed for a second rather than shook and shaked shook and shake shook and and uh and uh and jumbled it was more as though this world started to vanish for you and then it returned did you guys do something yes where uh, where the pouches were there are basically anchors holding this plane here we need to get rid of them okay I don't think it's just where those were, or maybe we missed one. Uh, there's one near the entrance, near a pile of mushrooms that was eating. It seemed bound there. 
It might be another. Um, I do see one over in the library here. I'll see what I can do there. So we are coming close to our projected end time. Yes. <laughs> I hate to end it there because you kind of have time to turn the tide, I think, a little bit here. Thank you, Mr. Raven and Annie, for making the suggestion that I didn't remember to follow up on. <laughs> um, actually, I'll mark Or got distracted as, by other things. As missing as well. Um, but... Um, so we could continue on for a little while longer, but not necessarily long enough to, to, to bring the resolution here. It, it mm -hmm. is getting quite humid, so it, I, okay. I would kind of like to stop. So what we will say is with some indication, perhaps, of how this place is working, uh, the group has now found themselves with, uh, dare I say, the early inklings of a plan and possibly ways to interfere. But... How will that strange lady take this interference? And what does your spy have to say about it? And just what is going on here anyway? I mean, I think that's a fair question. Who knows? <laughs> um, so uh, I want to thank my players for uh, sticking in with this strange world that's here. Um, it's going to be a bit of an extra delay because I'm going to be away. So we won't get a chance to play for another four weeks, unfortunately, which is also kind of a bummer. We may try to get earlier. I don't know. Probably not. Um, but I hope that if you're watching this, you've enjoyed it so far. I hope you guys have, have enjoyed playing this. Um, this strange, weird thing. I don't do normal games. I never do normal <laughs> games. I, I've tried and it just doesn't happen normally for me. So, um, welcome to my weird world. Uh, and the many layers of things that are slowly being unpacked. Um, and you can still ask questions. There are still people who can answer questions. But uh, yeah, <laughs> there we are uh, in the midst of this. If you have caught the end of this and you want to see more, you want to watch it over and over again, go to youtube.com slash ENCAF1, ENCAF1. I said it too fast. For the playlist, Legends of the Drowned Isles, which is the master playlist, or Legends of the Drowned Isles, LOTDC, The Great Confusion, which is this particular campaign. You can also catch us on Sundays, uh, roughly around 3 o'clock Atlantic time. It's very rough, but, but we do try uh, to watch it live. Uh, and you can also go on to Facebook. Look for Watchers of the Drowned Isles. Uh, once again, thanks, guys, for playing. Thanks for running. And uh, we'll be back in warmer days. <laughs> we'll all have to figure out what, what extra freezing temperatures we can manage to, to achieve. Uh, but until then, uh, have a delightful day. <laughs>